Hello, welcome. My husband was interested in doing mushrooms, growing mushrooms. He's a elk hunter and stuff, so uh -huh. he looks at them in the woods. I'm from Oregon. And mm -hmm. So he goes, I want to grow my own. So he was on YouTube one day looking for, um, you know, mushroom growing videos and logs and stuff, and he came across your YouTube. <laughs> well, so mush mushrooms grow, grow great in this stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just the perfect environment for them. <laughs> and so anyway, that's how I came to know about you. And oh. I came up to visit her, and I go, I'm going to have to check and see if his garden's up by here. And so here we are. Well, welcome. <laughs> cool. What do you use for the bark? What? It's, not, it's not bark. It's, tr it's tr chip tree branches. Okay. From what kind of trees? All trees. Okay. There's no tree you can't use. Well, I was told, I live up in Alaska, and I was told that alder will nourish the soil and any other bark will take the nutrients out of the soil as it breaks down. And as you look and as you look around in Alaska, how beautiful the forest is, and all those trees drop their needles and leaves and no one rakes them up and everything looks really good. Right. So you can rest assured what you're told is a lie. Okay. I'm I'm telling you, if you simply look at nature, nature is very plain, very clear, very visible. Right. And it's and all the stuff they tell you our lives. It's it's incredible. Yep. You know, for instance, like you, you see my forest out there. Yep. You see those those lighter lighter foliage trees are, are cedar. And everybody tells you cedar has tannic acid. That's toxic. And in the fall, after a, a hot summer, the interior needles turn turn brown. The wind blows them all off in the ground. Look how green all the trees are around them. Right. Ex excuse me. And here, here, here's my senses with a composting process. By the time that material gets to the roots, it's gone through the compost, the tannic acid is not there. The creator who designed the system didn't miss anything. Amen. It comes from a place of all wisdom, all knowledge. Nothing's wrong with it. It really works well. And it's all about recycle. From dust we came, from dust returned. Everything works that way. And nothing's toxic. Amen. And all these lies they tell you are insane because they're not true. You know? And it's just they just want to make it hard for us. So I have everything here. Any kind of tree in the world is chipped up here and put in the ground and everything grows great. Okay, cool. Thank you. Well, you, just, you, you know, you look at the color of the leaves on those trees. I mean, that is a dark green. Look at that cherry. Look, look at, you know, and they're telling you that wood chips cause a nitrogen, nitrogen tie-up? Excuse me, if that's a tie-up, I wonder what it looks like when it's not. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's crazy the stuff they tell you because the evidence is so obviously different yeah, that makes sense. you know i asked the creator about the about the, the stuff you can't use he has a very interesting sense of humor he told me have you noticed i don't have a landfill somewhere off in the plant in the universe i'm taking all the stuff you can't use i just started laughing i just started busting up everything in nature falls in the ground and breaks down and composts, and everything's good. <laughs> it's so simple. For sure. I have friends that will take, like, a fuchsia, a potted fuchsia, mm -hmm. and they'll take them out into the woods and bury them, like, next to a tree in all the stuff uh -huh. that's there, and they overwinter them there. Cool. And, yeah, it's like, oh, that's real different than... Sure. It works. Well, you know, the thing that amazes me is, is that how we, you know, we don't get it. You know, nothing in nature is without food all year long. All winter long they eat. You know, and you look up at Canada, 40 below zero. Everything in the woods, nothing dies. But everybody's farm with exposed dirt, everything freezes and dies. It's like, wake up, people. Wake up. What are you doing? This is just... <laughs> but we live in southeast Alaska, so it's not as cold. Uh -huh. But we use seaweed often. That's that's really good. Good. That is nutrient dense. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah, exactly. it just takes two years to break, break down. down. So, and I didn't know if I was doing something wrong or because I just lay it on top. No seaweed is again. If you look in nature, nothing's ever mixed. Nothing's ever buried. It's just layered. Right. It's so simple. Why do we work so hard to fail? Right. It's pathetic. I mean, it's just it's just like so crazy. All the things we do that make no sense and they don't work. Right. And we keep doing it. <laughs> yep. So what do you do then 
like to keep the deer from those dogs and the bears the dogs the dogs dogs are really great okay a good dog on your place will keep the deer away because fences are expensive and they're kind of a nightmare because you have to find gates and there's really limited access and they don't look good, you know. So I just really, a dog's really, really great. I have a um, crab apple in a large <coughs> planter that my husband built. Uh huh. And the deer, there's deer prints in. I'm oh, sure I know. The deer, deer love apples. They do, and they can smell when they're ripe. Oh, I know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they get there first. I, I last year, you know, we, we had a really, really wonderful dog, and she died. And last year I didn't have one. The deer defoliated every, took the leaves off of every one of my trees. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it was totally incredible. The raspberries, oh. they've been coming over the years and eating the raspberries. And then last year they ate all the new growth off yeah. of them. And I talked to them and I say, listen, the Bible tells me I'm supposed to take dominion over you. So you cannot have my stuff. You can have all the salmon berries, but the raspberries are mine. It's so funny. I have to talk to them every they, year. They don't, they don't understand English. Well, no, but I'm... Working at it. No. Yeah, a good dog is really effective. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they, they do really well. Shade's not a good dog anymore. <laughs> she needs to train somebody. I know. Grizz got that way, too. He was too old to... But Andre and Judy, they kept the deer at the... Right. I mean, they would come through every once in a while, so you know that they probably did. Well, what's interesting to me is, is, is how smart they are. You see right there in, on the edge of my neighbor's property, there's an apple tree. Yep. The deer come through there. They pass that tree, don't even look at it, and come here. Yeah. The apples they are know there. what's more nutrient-dense. Yeah. They're not stupid. They, yeah. they understand nutrient density. They get it. Yeah. <laughs> it's only humans that don't. So are your trees naturally growing down or did you... Well, well I'm going to take you back to what you said. Dominion. If you look at my trees, they have the appearance that they're humbly serving me. They're all bent over serving me. If you look at the top of my hand, yep. that's as high as my trees are. Yep. And that's intentional. Because I read that scripture and I yep. says, I'm not using a ladder here. And so when they got this big, I cut to a ladder growing out and that became the leader. I let nothing go above it. And see, as the branches grow out and, and the apples are heavy, it bends the branches down. The weight of the, of the, of the apples bend the branches over. Okay. But you can look at all my trees. Everything's accessible. I can reach every one of them. Convenient. And you have, is this onions planted by this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that um, like pest control? No. What I learned here a few years ago, God showed me, is that everything does so much better under trees than in full sun. It is dramatic. You'll see as you walk through here, you won't believe how much produce I have growing under my trees. And the trees do better having stuff grow under them. Right, that's it's a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, it's so, and it's so amazing how we want to do everything in monocultures, everything isolated, which is completely unnatural. Right. It's nuts. So it's just, you know, and again, I just, I tell people you get so much more use out of your space by growing stuff under trees. And I'm telling people the first thing you want to plant in your vegetable garden are fruit trees. You know, because your vegetables, do, and what I love about, you know, um, when it gets really hot and you can't grow greens outside in full sun, but under your trees in the shade, you can. So it just so extends your volume and your growing season. It's just, I love God. He, he's, he's amazing. He's, and it's all about multiplication. It's just so cool. Yeah, we have so much rain. We have 170 inches as our Oh my goodness, topsoil. that is huge. Wow. So we don't have much topsoil. Uh -huh. So we have to be creative. Well, this makes great topsoil. And it can handle the rain well. We have a rainforest that gets 14 feet of annual rainwater just down the road. And there's no standing water in the, or in, in the, in the forest. Because yeah. the wood chips displace it all. Yeah, God really has this down. He, he's... he's Awesome. <laughs> Most definitely he is awesome. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that he pursues us in relationship. I know. So good. So good. So if you want to have a have a, a treat, go over there and, and pick those flowers. They're they're a little bit peppery but, but the stem is really sweet. 
They're delicious. So you eat the stem and the flower? The, you'll see that the, the flower is a little bit peppery, but the stem is totally sweet. Okay. You'll love it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Do you like the yellow or the orange? They're both the same, as far as flavor. Hi. Hello. How are you? Go, go, go eat fl the flowers over here are really good. Oh. I, I, want you, I want you to sample food because it really tastes good here. And it's different than what you've had. And I want you to realize, you know, nutrient-dense food is really delicious. The, 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 the flower is kind of peppery, but the stem's sweet. Okay. Tastes like a radish. Isn't that good? Yeah. And, you, and, you, and you notice how the stem gets really sweet? The flower tastes a bit like a radish. Yeah. Well, you know, my, my, my wife likes them in a the salad because it, she's artistic. And it really makes a green salad look cool. And it gives a, gives a salad a little bit of a spunk, you know. It's not, it takes the blandness away from the greens, you know. And in the salad, it really sets it off the, the, the appearance, you know. Yeah, I've seen people putting them in salad yeah. and that. But, um, and, you know, they're edible, but yeah. I haven't ever done it, I mm -hmm. don't think. All right, we started today. Do you taste any difference in the... <laughs> This is stronger. Oh, it does the, yeah, the the red one, the, I mean orange one. Yeah, we got everything kind of laid yeah, out this today. Is stronger. Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome. You? I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, All right. So I am just starting in on my garden. Uh huh. We'll just moved in my place. Turned all the soil over. Saw your video. I'm watering so twice a week, and I'd really like to get out of that. And so the sources that you mentioned, too, so. those those. Uh, but mulch sources are all still available, right? Wood chips. You know, people, you know, arborists are pruning trees all the time. Yeah. And they chip them. And they got to find places to dump it. Right. You know, so if they can find a place that's accessible, close, that's an asset to them. And that's me. And so I'm... Yeah, so get a hold of them. And, you know, I, I've, these people have been bringing, bringing to me for 15 years, you know. Just, I mean, they're, they're awesome because they always know that they can come here anytime and dump, you know. Yeah. And so it's just really great to get. Yeah. And then um, I have tons of earwigs. I'm just wondering how they do in this stuff. What I found about all insects, and everybody hear me because you, we were taught in school that insects are pests. You following me? Did you go to that school? Maybe. Yes, yeah. I've been there. <laughs> but I'm finding, I'm having a problem with the creator whose essence is love that, to create a pest. So I asked him about the pests. He says, they're not pests, they're my police force. I created insects as a police force to take out dehydrated, stressed plants so only healthy plants produce seed and maintain healthy plants. Bugs will only attack unhealthy dehydrated plants. They will never attack healthy plants. And when you're here today, I want you to observe everything you're looking at until they start getting old and on their way out have absolutely no evidence of any bug bite. Uh -huh. It's huge. And, and you're not using anything else. None. You're totally organic. Totally. But because I understand their purpose. You see, allopathic medicine, which is our, our mindset, is all about treating symptoms. When a bug shows up, it's an alarm clock. It's a wake-up call. Your plant's not well. Don't kill the bug. Get your plant well. And the bug leaves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, we're so backwards. Yeah. You know, we're out there treating symptoms when the root problem is right. you're, you're malnutrition. Yeah. Eat good foods, you'll get well. You're not drug deficient. Yeah. It's, so, path it's pathetic. And, and, I, and I was bought up in that, that mantra, as you, as you mentioned. And That's so, all of us were. And so all my old gardens, it's like, I've stopped fighting moles because you knew you will never win. Oh, I win. I oh. trap them. <laughs> I, like I, I trap them and I totally control them. Oh. I got one right now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch. He's gonna, oh, no. I, my sense is this is private property and you're trespassing. Uh -huh. And I'm going to take you out. Uh -huh. And I have what I call in the back of the Ho Chi Minh, Ho Chi Minh Trail. I was in Vietnam. I've caught over 30 moles in one runway. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I don't put up with it. All right. We've had trouble. The, yeah, the, the, Vic, the Victor Trap yeah. is the only one that works. Wait, what kind? The Victor Trap. Victor. It's, the spring is so potent that you can't, you can't push the thing together with your hands. They send you, give you a little extender so you can get it together. I know what a trap you're talking about. But so, no one knows how to use them. Yeah, that's a problem. And that's a problem. They see, but I'll tell you how to use it. Everybody hear me. When you see that mound, you dig down until you find the runway. That means a hole going straight through. And here's what you do. When you find a straight runway, you put a stick so you can line it up and you take dirt and you pack into the holes both ends as hard as you can. Pack dirt back in there and you bring the dirt to the level of the top of that hole and you set your trap right in line. As they come push through, they got to push that dirt out of the way and that triggers the trap. Right, right. And I catch them all the time. Yeah, I was wondering because that's one thing they do is when I've got moles, I have to water a lot. They dry the soil out terribly. 
So that sounds. And they and they and they devastate your yard. Yeah. All these mounds. All it's just a mess. I I don't put up with it. I totally catch him. And so I think your film we were looking at was a year or two old. You've been here for 17 or 18 years? I've been here for 41 years. 41 years. The film came out 11 years ago. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, 11 years ago the film was made. Yeah. And Paul, where did you come from in LA? Los Angeles, Eagle Rock. Eagle Rock. Between Pasadena and Glendale. Uh, Culver City. Wow. All right, cool. I was born in, 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 in Los Angeles when five didn't exist. We saw deer in the way to school. We trapped rabbits in the hills. It was a nice place to grow up. We could see Catalina Island from our house. My parents' house was four, and we could see Catalina Island. And I remember when smog first started happening, and we were our eyes were watering, and it was just a bummer. So it was a nice place when I was a kid, but it changed, and I left because it wasn't safe, it wasn't a safe place to live. I'm so we've been here 41 years, and I, I'm so thankful to be here. We just moved up here April uh, April 16th. Where do you Where do you live? Bremerton. Oh, cool, yeah. Where Yeah. University Point Circle. Yeah, all right. Beautiful house, right? Yeah, all right. Lady who, she passed away from cancer and so did her husband. But they did so many upgrades, Pella windows, I mean, beautiful place. Great. That's the only good thing I think about L.A. It's where you can cash out and buy something nice up here. Yeah. You have the right idea. Well, we saw this in 79. Yeah. Wow. We saw this coming. And I'm, and you know, I'm thinking, man, I, I got to get a place I can grow food for my family because yeah. LA is not going to be safe. Right. Yeah. And I am so thankful. We, I mean, look at this air. I know. I know. It's the cleanest air on the planet. I know. I, know. I have the. My, you, if, if you want to get water, I have a drinking fountain here. My water is 7.3 pH. It comes out of the glaciers and livings. It's totally delicious. Mm -hmm. I grow the finest food in the world. I mean, quality of life. Billionaires don't yeah. eat as well as I do. I'm right. serious. Right. You know, it's just like I'm. My, my father really takes good care of me. It's, yeah. He's awesome, yeah. awesome father. Did you planted sequoias when you moved in? Look at them. Yeah. You know how old those are? 40 years? Not when I moved in. They're old. Those are only 21 years old. Ah, look at them. Wow. But you know what? People always ask me how fast that grows. So I did a test to demonstrate. If you look at my house, yep. you see where the two roofs come together? There's a sequoia right behind there. Oh, yeah. That tree was planted the same day these were. Oh. In dirt. I, these I planted wood chips. That tree's one third the size. It is amazing the difference. And it's all about what you eat. You are what you eat. And when you're eating nutrient dense soil, you grow well. Right. When you're eating compacted dead soil, yeah. you grow slowly. Right. I mean, it's so simple. It's not complicated. Nutrients are very different. Nutrient yeah. density right. is huge. Yeah. Right. And today we're all sick because our food's no good. Right. You know, even organic farmers, all they're putting back is NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. That's not the full spectrum of minerals. There's far more. And these wood chips, they're all there. Mm -hmm. All the minerals are present. It's really powerful. Mm -hmm. Just for an example, bend over and push the wood chips away and pick up that beautiful black stuff down below and yeah. smell it. Yeah. Put it. Run it by your nose and smell that. Yep, that's organic. Yeah. That's, that, the, it's sweet smelling. Yeah, that's yeah. the odor of minerals. It is if you go to farms that raise your food, you pick up their soil, there's no odor right. because there's no minerals. I mean, it's so evident. It's so yes, obvious. Know. You know, it's it's not complicated. Yeah, and you know, our you talked about allopathic medicine. It's we, we really have we don't have a healthcare system. We have a disease care system. It, it is. It's exactly what it is. Yeah. Allopathic medicine is about supporting and maintaining disease. That's what it's all about. Yep. They're good for emergent. They're, they're they're good for emergency. No, no, this is, this is just they're great for emergency and diagnosis, but not, they're not about health. Right. No preventative. It's mostly just yeah. Oh, and it's it's scary what's happening. I have I have I was so sad. I have a friend in in um Detroit who I've never met. We, we were like best friends. I, he saw the film. We we just have conversations over the phone. But his brother and son were not feeling well, and they went to the hospital. They had insurance, and they put him on a ventilator and killed him. Oh. They're dead. Oh. They're dead, and they put on the on the death certificate COVID nineteen. Yes. I'm just telling you, man. It's evil. It is corrupt, yep. evil. Yep. Yep. I know. And then you have so much stuff in reach of the deer. And I have dogs okay. that keep all the deer out. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's why everybody around I me know. has dogs. And I saw deer in the yard for the first time <laughs> about a week ago, but I'm hoping that all the dogs will keep that. Yeah, the, the dogs are effective. Yeah. They, really, they really work. Yeah. A good dog. You have to have a good dog though, because my, my golden retriever, she's everybody's friend. They don't, they're not bothered by her, but 
this 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 uh, chocolate lab, and then uh, someone gave us an awesome Pyrenees, uh, 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 and that dog's gonna it's a baby right now, but it's gonna be amazing. So <laughs> I'm really looking forward to, because last year you know my 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 chocolate lab had died, and last year the deer defoliated every one of my trees, oh, wow. took every leaf off the trees. Wow. But you know what that taught me? You know you know the word says in everything give thanks, in everything give thanks. So I'm learning to do that. You know what God showed me by, by that demonstration? If it ever ever gets tough, you can su you can survive on apple leaves. Oh yeah. The deer were totally s supporting themselves That's on my true. apple leaves, That's true. and so I never knew that. So that was a, a an awareness. Like mm -hmm. I know I can live on apple leaves if I have your to. Trees flush that back out okay. Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah, they they're they're hardy. They're healthy. Awesome. They're not um they're not in any way de you know deficient. Well, you're certainly inspiring. Well, the Creator is. I got this all from Him. I came here and I didn't have water. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just telling. I'm just telling you what I got because I'm totally changing direction. I was going to do raised beds and everything, and then I started realizing how much water it's going to take. Raised beds are so labor intensive because because they're above grade, they dry out instantly, and you're watering constantly. If you notice in nature, God has no raised beds. It's just, you know, here, we, here we're, we're, we're related to the master garden of the universe. Right. And we do these stupid things. <laughs> right. When we should know better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere he's growing stuff, he's showing us how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And we do different things and make yeah. it hard for ourselves. No, we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna go on a tour. But I, I'm gonna well, we can we can start. It's it's, it's time. Come on, let's, let's, everybody, come over. I want to get started. Anyway, welcome. I'm glad you all came. It's a beautiful day. Um, if you need to use a bathroom, you just follow the driveway around the, up, up the, around the house. When you come around the house, you look off to the left, you see a, a building with a green roof. That's the bathroom. If you need water, up by that four one, there's a drinking fountain. And if you brought water, I encourage you to pour it out because my water is really good. It's, it's really good water. You should, you should enjoy it. Anyway, um, I'm glad you all came. And, and the reason I'm doing this is, is that I used to work so hard to fail. I'm serious. I, we, my brother and I wore out shovels for my dad spading in clay soil. We wore them out. They broke in hard clay, hard clay ground. And I rode a till, and I, and I did all the hard stuff. You know, get out there in the spring, rode till in my mud. And in, in, a, in, three, in a week, it's all back to weeds again. So I know the hard end of it. And... Um, but I had the most interesting experience when we came here. We bought this property with the, with a desire to grow food for our family. We left LA, but we encountered a real challenge. We drilled a well, went 213 feet, and got half a gallon a minute. No water. I mean, half a gallon a minute barely runs a house. I mean, we're talking barely. We did it, but it was hard. And so I'm building my house, and I'm saying, God, how will I grow fruit trees without water? He says, come out to the woods, and I'll show you. And that day changed my life. I got on the ground, I started moving the stuff away, and I saw the incredible life force in the soil. It was like August, like right now, the trees are bright green, they have shallow roots, and they're not stressed because the covering held all the moisture and fed the trees. And I tell people one of the greatest gifts I ever got was that lousy well because it pushed me to, encounter, to, to, to go to the Creator and discover how He has everything growing. Covering is so significant in God. It's significant. If you look at everything in nature, every living organism has a protective covering. We have skin, dogs have fur, fish have scales, birds have feathers, and the soil is a living organism. And nowhere in nature where man has not been is a, is a soil ever uncovered. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Everywhere in nature there's a covering. The first thing we do when we show up, I'm going to grow things here. I'm going to have a farm. <laughs> and we rip the covering off, the ground compacts and dies and weeds come in. And we don't get it. You'd have thought the Dust Bowl would have woke us up in this country. Right. That was a significant, horrendous event to our, to our topsoil. But they're still tilling. They didn't get it. Right. And if you fly across the U.S. in the, in the winter time and then it's clear, you look down below, it looks like a cracked, broken desert. It is pathetic. We used to have 8 to 12 feet of topsoil in the Midwest. There isn't 8 inches today. You know how long it takes in nature to build one inch of topsoil? One inch? Anywhere from 100 to 250 years to build one inch of topsoil. That's how long it takes. And I feel so grateful here because I'm getting multiple inches because I'm bringing this up in volume, so I'm really speeding up the process. 
but it's just, I get so blessed because every year my produce gets bigger and sweeter. This is a constant upgrade. It never levels off. It never finishes. It always improves. And I so love that. You know, these poor farmers today that spend the fortune to go to college and get degrees in, in, in agriculture, their reality is they spend more and more each year to produce less and less. That's their reality. I mean, it's insane. You'd think they'd get it like, this doesn't work. This is going the wrong direction. But they keep doing it. And it's so simple. It's all about covering. Just put it back. Don't take it away. If you're harvesting grain, put the, put the, put the, the, the you know, the, um, the, ch the chaff back or the, you know, the, the, the straw. Whatever you're growing, just put back. And it's, it's that simple. You know, it's just so easy. Now, what I love about wood chips over all the other materials like leaves or grass clippings or, or um, whatever, wood chips have fungi. And to me, fungi is one of the most significant components in living soil. It's huge. And just for example, mycelium, that's one fungi. Mycelium will travel under the ground for miles. I'm not talking like feet, we're talking for miles. And when plant roots attach to that fungi, that mycelium, they access the life force that's spread out for miles. It's huge. I mean, it is amazing, the design the Creator put in nature, you know. And I'm just, I'm so loving it, like it's just, it's so, and you know, I had, I had these farmers come in here in the, in the wintertime, they say, how come you don't have mud? I said, there's no, there's no mud in nature, but their whole farms are all mud. What a drag, what an inconvenience, what a miserable environment. And you can lay on this stuff. You're not going to get dirty. You know, your feet are always clean, no matter what the weather is. You know, it's just, it, and, it's, and it's, it has buoyancy. It's not hard. It's just a, comf a comfortable environment. Like, really? You know, you walk in the woods, you just feel so relaxed. Well, of course, just create that environment in your yard. You can do it. It's really easy. You know? So as, as we're going we're gonna, to um, go, go through, I'm going to show you things that are growing here. If you have questions, please ask. It's not an interruption. It really helps me get track and you know, stay on track. And so if you have a question, please ask. Don't, don't feel like it's an interruption. Nick, Nick over here is a really good friend. He lives here with me, and, and um, he'll take you over and show you what his, his, his gardens he's got going. He has a CSA group. He, he's, he supplies food for about 20 people every week, and um, he's been a, a real blessing. Do you compost? I'll tell you how I compost. At the end of the tour, we're going to finish the loop. I have a chicken pen, okay. and everything goes there. The advantage of chickens over a compost bin or a compost pile is that they, with their, they totally shred it to pieces, they eat what they want to maintain their lives and give me eggs, and they turn it all back to compost. I says, this is my soil manufacturing plant. The eggs are a bonus. And when you come to my chicken pen, you're gonna be amazed at two, two things you see that you'll never see anywhere else with chickens. There's absolutely no odor, and they won't come up to you. Usually when it comes to chicken pen, because they're, they're hungry. My chickens will ignore you because they're so well fed. And when you stand there, there's absolutely no odor. You can't smell anything because the manure is so homogenized in all the yard waste that it's not there. And see, and see, the chickens solve all my issues with all my waste. All my weeds, all my expired plants, all the ashes from the stove, anything in the house that goes bad, all go to the chickens that eat it if they want to, and the rest turn back to compost. So that's, the, that's where the loop is finished. Everything ends up there. And then my challenge is, this, this, this issue of abundance can be a real challenge. If you look at my trees, You've never seen fruit trees that are so open, so little foliage. You know why I prune them that way? I'm trying to reduce the amount of fruit I get. Did you hear me? I'm trying to get less, but it's not working. It's frustrating, this abundance. It can be a challenge. And so what's happening now in my chicken pen? My fences are, get, are getting too short. And so I have to keep hauling that compost out because they're making too much. So it's just abundance is amazing. There's just no end of it at all levels. Yes? Paul, did you bend your apple trees like that? No. Um, I shared earlier, and, and I read in Genesis, when God created this amazing planet, he, he decided to use us as caretakers, have dominion over my planet. You take care of it. Are you following me? Yes, sir. If you look at my trees, you see the top of my hand? Yeah. That's where they all end. And if you look at my trees, they look like they're humbly bending over and serving me. They're under dominion. Cool. I'm serious. Yeah. I'm not going to use a ladder. Yeah. And I'm going to reach everything. Right. 
and because I'm in control. And my trees are going to be under my dominion. Cool. It's reality. It's the truth. You look at most orchards, all the apples are out of reach. The tree is so dense you can't even get into it. And it's a lot of work. People always say to me, this is the first time I had to bend over to pick an apple. You know? <laughs> I'm serious. Everything is right within reach. And then many times you have to bend over to get it because it's so low to the ground. You know? And then the advantage when the apples fall, they fall on a real soft surface. They don't fall far and they don't get bruised. So it just makes it real convenient. Totally convenient. Okay, so head on over there with Nick and then I'll just meet you over here at this end and then we'll continue. You see these two new trees in my orchard? Yeah. That's different. It's not in the orchard, it's in the parking area, but you know what those are? Those are Cosmic Crisp. And those are the most amazing apple on the planet, man. They are off the charts. Yeah, they're incredible. They're awesome. So I couldn't, I, there's a place in, up in, um, on Alaska, an amazing um, orchard. It's, it's, it's called Burnt Tree Orchard and Garden, Orchard and um, Nursery. But the guy is a genius and he has the most, we went up there and it's just a beautiful place. And we, and we, we went and got, this, got these trees from him. But it was just so, so cool. I got a couple of chestnut trees too. I planted them back in my woods. Really? Yep. And where did you get these again? Burnt Ridge. It's called Burnt Ridge Orchard and Nursery. An amazing place. He really, really has a great, great variety of fruit trees, and he's, they're really healthy and well. Yeah, we're going to have to get some of these. Yeah, they're, they're, they are awesome. But you know what's interesting? Look at the color of foliage compared to the tree behind it. You see, these wood chips have been here only about th four years. Right. So they're not as far along as that. Because... <laughs> Yeah. And how many acres do you have? It's 5.3 acres, but what you're going to look at today, what I'm growing in, is half an acre. Everything, the orchard, the garden, everything is one half acre. Yeah. You heard of Paul Stamens, right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you do the practical, you know, what Paul Stamens, uh, you, know, per, you know, says scientifically. Uh -huh, right. You know what I mean? But, but that's, that's the uh, beautiful thing. Well, I'm just copying nature. This is what happens in nature. And I like, I like it. I don't know how you quote so much. I can't remember any of the, you know, the Bible that way. <laughs> well, uh, um, I, memorizing scripture saved my memory. Oh, really? I destroyed it with mescaline and acid, oh. LSC and, 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 and mescaline. Yeah. And as I memorized scripture, I got my memory back. Oh, really? You know, the Bible says it renews your mind. Yeah. It really does. You know, that's funny, because I went to UC Berkeley, mm -hmm. and the same thing over there. Acid, masculine, ecstasy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I was in Vietnam. I got lied to oh, yeah. my government, and I became, you know, angry. Yeah. And so I, I flipped to the other side, and I just did everything opposite of what, what I... But what was interesting is that the only thing I couldn't forget was Scripture. And God used the Bible, the Scripture, to bring me back. And as I memorized Scripture, it renewed my mind. I, I, I'm Catholic. Mm -hmm. And what's always scared me in life is hell. Mm -hmm. Well, and, it should. Yeah. It, you know, eternity has no exit. Yeah. Eternity has no exit. There's no weak, no getting out. But like you're saying, that choose God rather than oh yeah, the evil, you know? yeah. He's he wants to he he created heaven for us to have an incredible future, and he paid a huge price for us to get there. Yeah. It's a shame not to take advantage of it. I'm very glad I met you. I just barely saw your movie. Well, thank you. To come out here. Yesterday? Yesterday. You know what amazed me? That, that, that film was made 11 years ago. Really? Wow. 11 years ago. And people are just seeing it for the first time. Yep. Yeah. I, I love God. He's awesome, man. He's just incredible how he does stuff. But I had to come down here. You know well, I'm glad you did. <laughs> now, is anybody growing strawberries? Yeah. How do these look? You see where they're growing? In the shade. In the shade under the tree. I love it. And they're thriving. It's not like they're struggling. And they were full of berries this June. You know, the June, June berries, because the ever-bearing berries don't taste good. They, don't, they, they have more berries, they don't have the flavor, but the June berries are, and these are just incredible flavor. And it's just phenomenal how they do. So are there any, any gardeners here? Come over here. I want you to identify a plant. A garden plant. What's that plant right there in front of that ro that rhododendron, that, that green little clump? Right there in front of you. What is that? I don't 
honestly don't know. Oh. Go, uh, go, come on, you gardeners. This is a garden plant. Which one are we looking at? That small little clump of, of green. Okay. You know why you don't, you can't identify it? Huh. Because it's nobody's growing it. Oh. Because they think you can't. You know what that is? That's wasabi. Oh, really? really? And wasabi only grows in nature in full shade in standing water. Oh, that's right. I want you to get how powerful these wood chips are. This is in getting no water. It's in wood chips and it gets a lot of sun. Wow. Choose, check out the, the leaf. Yeah, the, the flavor is not as it's not as hot as the root. It isn't. It's not, but it's but it's you can tell it's wasabi. It's it's it, it'll get it's spicy, and it's really good. How, it's, how old is this plant? It's six years old. I just, I just whack it down every year to the ground. Mm -hmm. oh, that tastes good. And it's been here six years with no attention. That's amazing. Wood chips are amazing. This is what I want you to get. It's, it covers all the bases. It meets the plants every need. It is just awesome. Now, wow. is it possible to do watercress, or does it really have to have water? I mean, does it have to be in a watercress? You can do anything in it. Okay. So watercress would be fine. It's, fi it's fine. There's nothing that won't grow here. Okay. You know, the, uh, when we get to the herb garden, I'm, I'm growing wasabi in front of my blueberries. Oh. Wow. You know what I grow right next to it? It's sage. Nice. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. I had to ask the creator to talk to me because I couldn't wrap my brain around it. Sage grows in deserts with no water. And wasabi grows in standing water. I'm growing them side by side and they're thriving. Wow. You know what he told me? It made me cry. Mm -hmm. He says there's enough air space in the wood chips for the sage to hang out in the open spaces and avoid the water. But if wasabi wants the water, it goes, but they have the option. I just started bawling. Mm -hmm. God made this environment so perfect that you can grow everything in the same place. And the pH issue is really cool. In my herb garden, I have blueberries. Right next to it, I have lavender, both thriving. Lavender wants to grow in an alkaline environment. Blueberries wants to grow in an acid environment. But you know what the pH is in wood chips? 7.0, the number of God in perfect center. And what I get when you have, and you have an environment of center, Everything's happy. It doesn't matter whether I like acid or alkaline, but at center, we're all good. And I love, you see, these, these demonstrations in nature just reveal the character of God. It shows how ordered He is, how everything's in perfect balance. It's huge. And I'm so loving that all His characteristics, all His principles are seen in nature, all of them. You, see, you read that, that, that verse in, in Romans 1 that sounds like a contradiction. The invisible attributes of God are clearly seen by the things he's made, so no one has any excuse not to know God. Everything about God's character is revealed in nature. It is so beautiful. It's powerful. Yeah. And that's why he put us in the garden up front, was to get to know him, because that's where he shows up. And you know he didn't have plan B? You know where all of us will end up for the next thousand years? All of us? <laughs> not, not wood chips, but, but in a garden. And here's, and here's the wording. It's in Joel chapter 4. And everyone will be under their own vine and under their own fig tree. <laughs> everyone. He's putting us back in the garden because we should have never left. Right. It's the most natural place to have a relationship with God because He shows up there. And everything about Him is visible. It's just, it's so cool. <laughs> At what point in your life did you really grasp all these concepts was it when i when i went out to the woods and asked god how to grow he says come when he showed me how to grow trees without water that's when my whole life changed prior to that i'm reading books i'm in the natural mind but that day changed my my whole reality and i started talking to god and before that point would you say that you had a close relationship with god it was, was close kind of it was close but it was distant mm -hmm. you know i didn't think you could hear you know he didn't talk to me and I didn't know how to hear. And it took me years to figure out how to hear. And my wife helped me. She got this, this teaching by this guy, Mark Verker, How to Hear the Voice of God. And he made one statement that changed my life. God's voice comes as a spontaneous thought. So I'm looking for a still small voice. I don't hear any voice. But when he said spontaneous thought, it just opened up to me. God's been speaking to me my whole life. I just didn't notice. Spontaneous thought. It's huge. And you know, you see this scripture three times in the Bible. Three times, first in Psalms and twice in Hebrews. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. 
Today is very present tense. God is speaking to us every day. And how we harden our heart is we don't listen, we're preoccupied, we have, a, we have an agenda, and we don't pay attention. We just pass it off. Spontaneous thought, ignore it. But I, I love hearing from God. He's awesome. He has such great ideas. And He's really cool to talk to. You know, and so I just enjoy conversing with God and talking to Him because He's the best. <laughs> So, all my trees are dwarf trees. Do you know how dwarf trees are made? Do you know how they're created? Do you just prune them? I mean, is it no, the, they're dwarf trees. You oh. see this tree right here? Yeah. This is obviously not a dwarf. Okay. Cherry, right. cherry right. trees yeah. can't be made dwarf. Right. But my apples are all dwarf trees. See, like this tree is like 41 years old, but you know, but it's I'm I'm still maintaining it. How they create dwarf trees is they find a rootstock that doesn't naturally develop roots, has a small root system. A plant and they'll graft into that and by having a small root system that will ensure the tree never gets big because the roots never spread it can't eat well but you know in Psalm chapter 2 it says that God laughs and God laughs at the concept of a dwarf tree let me show you this is so awesome I love God he he has a sense of humor and yeah. he laughs at the concept of a dwarf tree this is this is powerful just follow me right here. I want to show you something really cool. Before you go, I see the woodpeckers have made themselves handy. And the poor woodpeckers worked so hard because I had no bugs in my tree and they got nothing. <laughs> A lot of work for nothing. That is woodpecker. That's woodpecker oh, damage. Interesting. But it didn't hurt my tree. Yeah. So the, what about sap suckers? Do you have them? I don't even know what, what you know, I don't even care. Here's, here's, here's what my sense is. When you have healthy plants, there's no challenge. Nothing challenged him. I had an older, an older man came from Italy. It was, he was so, such a cool experience having him. You could tell by looking at his skin, he'd been gardening and farming his whole life. He had that look. But Italians are not, are not subtle. They're not quiet. And this guy's in my face. Everything I was saying, you can't do that. That won't work. I says, well, come here and look. You know? He says, well, I guess you're doing it. You know? And when I showed him this, this changed his life. I says, you see that? Come over here, I'll just show it to you. You see this root sucker coming up over here? Next to this apple tree right there? Yes. Yes. You know where that's coming from? See that plum tree over there with the purple plums? Yep. Yeah. That's 30, 30 foot radius, not diameter. 30 foot radius from the trunk, I'm having roots develop. Yeah. On a dwarf tree. So this guy's loud, he's saying, that's impossible. The roots only go as far as the drip line. And so he snapped off a, a, a branch. He walked over there and he gets, stands with his mouth wide open. He says, I can't believe it. That's where it's coming from. And you could see on his visage, on his, on his, on his face, that he realized he'd been struggling his whole life under the effect of lies. It blew, it blew his mind. All my life I've been working hard. I didn't need to. This is so amazing. This is so simple. It was, it was really interesting to see. Like he got it. Like he couldn't deny it. The, all the books say as far as a drip line, but this is 30 feet and it's there. You can't deny the evidence. It's awesome. <laughs> the way these branches are growing, is that because you kind of manipulate them in that fashion or did they just naturally grow that way? It's not manipulation. It's pruning is an art form. And I have developed these trees so I can reach everything, and it's all about control. Mm. And I want to show you something interesting about, about pruning. All the things you get in this, everything you've got in school and from books are all lies. And you think I'm crazy, but let me give you the, the, the reason. Who's the God of this world? Who's the God of this world? Satan. Who's he the father of? Lies. Get it. And so every, any book that you read on pruning, they say never cut the collar. Okay? You know that. Don't cut the collar. I want to show you something really cool here. I asked the creator, where do you make the cut? He says, I made a line. Yeah. See it there? Cut to the line. Hmm. I love it. He made it so simple for us. And let me show you the effect. You see all these places where I cut the line, how beautiful they heal? Look at that. Everywhere. Everywhere. Everything just totally heals. Look at that. Everywhere. Totally heal beautifully. When you, cut, you see when they cut beyond the line, everybody does. You get all these suckers coming out of that place. The wood below 
with a cut because the collar can't grow over it, dies and becomes a cavity. Mm -hmm. You look at my trees, there's no cavities anywhere. They're all healed well because I cut to the line. Mm -hmm. I love the Creator, I made a line. He made it so simple for us, so obvious, and we don't get it. I do a lot of grafting. I'll show you, and I'll show you how to, because it's so simple. You know the Creator grafts? You know God grafts. It speaks about in Romans how Paul's saying, you know, don't, don't be arrogant. You, the wild olive branch, were grafted in to the natural one. God can take the dead ones, and he can graft those back in. You know, so God grafts. I love it. Yeah. And you know what's so cool about grafting? My orchard's obviously full. And when some new varieties come up, I'm not limited. I can just plug them in and I always have new varieties. And it's so cool on your apple tree, you got like red apples and yellow all in the same tree. It's, it's quite attractive, you know, it's, it's cool. And something else that God showed me really cool about drafting, this is huge. If you're aware of what's happening on the planet today with what the enemy is doing with agriculture, is that these farmers are using more and more pesticides every year. And the bee population in the world is declining at a very scary rate. And what they don't get and understand is if you don't have bees, you won't have food. You know the Holy Spirit showed me, and this is really huge. He says, by grafting into your trees, because they're close, when the wind blows, you'll get cross-pollination. And you'll get pollination if you have no bees. I love God. He's off the charts. He's outside the box. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I had the most incredible demonstration. I had this boss pear I've had for years. It's an old tree, you can see it's big. And I never had any fruit, maybe one or two. And so I'm frustrated, I says, I'm over this. So I started grafting into it another pear variety. So the second year that was there, the Holy Spirit like got in my face and says, I want you to watch that graft. I said, okay. So the graft just bloomed really beautifully. And I thought, yeah, that's impressive. That next year, that tree was loaded with fruit. And here's what he showed me. Your pear tree is 30 foot over, took a bee a while to get pollen to your, to your thing. Because the pollen's in the tree, when the wind blew, it covered everything. And I was totally blown out, like, wow. It's huge. It makes your production so much more productive when you graft. Way superior to bees. God's awesome, man. He's just, he's so cool. Yeah, see this, 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 this little shoot here is coming from that plum tree over there, the root, root, you know, root sucker. So while you're here, that plum tree, there's a lot of really good plums on the ground, and they're really delicious. So I want everybody to enjoy plums. But you'll you'll be you'll be amazed how good they are. Look at how nice these cabbages are growing under my trees. Yeah, wow. You know, and and I want and I want I want you all to realize that. These aren't fertilized and they're not watered. They're totally ignored. Wow. I'm being real. We don't do anything here. This is just the natural result of nutrient-dense soil. It's awesome. And next year I can do it again, they'll get bigger. Because you see, as this stuff is composting, the soil below is always being upgraded. It's always being improved. It never gets static. It's never like levels off. Always upgrade. Right. I tell you, when I used to work so hard to fail, man, this really blesses me. Uh -huh. This is like, all, I used to really struggle just to maintain. Yeah. And now I don't do anything, it keeps getting better. This is fun. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> here, over here, there's a whole bunch on the ground over here. These plums, go, go get it, because they're really good. You, you, you see, uh, look, look, at the, look at the foliage on those squash under my trees. I love it. I mean, you go to, you go to farms that are fertilized and water. They don't have anything like that. That's growing under my trees. <laughs> How often do you water this part? This, this orchard has not been watered for 41 years, ever. This orchard has not been watered for 41 years, ever. Ever. I love it. Who waters a forest? Get it. I mean, it's so obvious. 
Aren't those good? Amazing. Food is, God created food really good. He made food good. I love it. And you see how much water's in it? It's just full of moisture. It's, it's, so, it's dripping. It is. It's so, so cool. Go, go get those plums because they're good to eat. So how did you select what trees you would grow? Well, um, recommendations to people, you know, and, or I ate things, you know, and I had one like, man, that's a good apple. I, wanna, I gotta have that one, you know. Mm -hmm. Just over time, just keep. And, I, and I'm, I'm still adding, because, you know, cause, cause, you know uh, um, Cause of Chris just came out, so it was just a great apple. I'm gonna have it, you know. Wow. So I've inherited a small orchard. I've got five trees just thick grass underneath them and I, I want to replace those with mulch. I noticed in your movie that uh, what in New York that family just cut the grass short, put down newspaper and then mulch right or the, excuse me the bark the uh, wood chips wood chips right on top of it. Is that going to affect the I'm worried about no, the rooting system. No no the grass here, here everybody hear me if you look, if you look in if you look in in, in, um, in in prairies there's absolutely no tree nothing else growing. There's a reason for that. Grass has an enzyme on, it, on its root that discourages all of the growth. Mm. It's the most negative thing you could have in an orchard. Mm. And again, you think about it, whatever comes down, the grass gets first. Mm -hmm. So it's a major, major deterrent mm. to that tree. So in, in grass, just cover with uh, wood chips. If you do eight inches or more, the grass all dies. If you don't have enough, just paper over it. And the grass will compost and become fertilized and feed your trees. And then in that orchard, you can do what I'm doing here, grow all your produce right. mm -hmm. in the orchard. So I don't need to worry about uh, lack of oxygen or anything. The wood chips will allow it's air It's full of oxygen. Right? All gotcha. kinds of air go through. Go. Okay. Here, here's what's interesting. Let me just, again, this shows you the dumb things we're told. Remember how they told you you can't put wood chips up against tree trunks? How stupid. Think about it. If you look at nature, when the wind blows, yeah. needles and leaves will pack up against tree trunks because that's where they were stopped. Yeah. No one pulls that away. The tree's fine. Mm -hmm. The stuff's full of oxygen. It can't hurt anything. What's up with making a little circle around your tree trunk for weeds and garbage to fall in to make it hard for yourself? Mm -hmm. I mean, everything they tell you to do is labor intensive, stupid, doesn't work. It's just nuts. Yeah. So bring the wood. I've had wood chips 16 inches deep around my trees, right to the tree trunk. And they were fine. Mm -hmm. It's like I put money in the bank. Mm -hmm. You know, like people ask, how much widgets do you want? I ask, how much money do you want in the bank? It's like a major resource. It's going to break down and turn into the soil, but man, it's awesome. So make use of it. And there's no limit. Look at my poor tree here. It got buried with all these, all these peas. You can't even find the tree. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right, yeah. and, and again, look at all the apples on this little tree. It's just like, gosh, man, it's just nuts, the volume, you know. Yeah, eat those. You know they're 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 getting old, but they're still pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, I'm just saving seed from them. This is like a really amazing sugar mm. stamp. It's called Cascadia. Oh, is that right? Uh -huh. Cascadia. Yeah. So, uh, is there any gardeners here mm -hmm. who who pull weeds? Yeah. Who know what dandelions are? Yes. Come here. Luckily, I have less. But I want you. I want you to experience something that's going to blow you away. Totally blow you away. Because you know when you pull dandelions, what that's like. Come over here and pull this dandelion and, and watch how easy it comes out. And everybody, everybody, watch them do this. Right there. Some gardener, come here. Oh. Yeah, just go around, right around the base, and pull, and go pull it out. Look at that. You see how easy that came out? Yeah. And you got the whole root. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Everything about wood chips is awesome. Yeah. It's totally incredible. <laughs> what about them? I've been told that dandelions alkalinize the, the soil. Dandelions is really a good food. That would be really good to eat. Everything about dandelions are really great. Yeah. I just don't care for them in my garden because I'm kind of, I was raised in a Swiss German culture that everything has a place should be in place. Mm -hmm. And so that, that to me is an eyesore. <laughs> but otherwise, it's really nutritious, it's really beneficial, and you can eat it. I had a woman come from, from the Philippine Islands, and she saw one of those and says, Can I go pull that? And she says, Yeah, go help yourself. And she's coming back and says, We buy these in the store in the Philippine Islands, and they're all bitter. This one's not bitter. I can't believe how sweet this was. She was shocked that it was not sweet, not bitter, because 
Nothing's bitter. You don't even you don't even thin your beets. You don't need to. You know why? Here's why. Because the soil's soft, they just push themselves out of each other's way. I was noticing that. I, you got three of them right next to each Are you, the, the, the wood chips, you see the hard compacted soil, they'll, they'll, they'll be compacted. But here they just move out of each other's way. I mean, everything about wood chips is completely awesome. It's just off the charts amazing. <laughs> look, at, look at these beautiful, the, the size of the leaves of that. Look at that. I'm telling you, man, people with miracle Grow and all these chemicals don't even get close to this. And this is happening with no effort. You just stick the thing in the ground and walk off, and it just does it. Um, Nick? What, 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 this is, it's all gone as seed. See, see, that's all seed right now. You see, those, 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 all, those little two, they all have seed in it. And look, look at the, look at the abundance of seed the creator makes. It's just, it's just totally awesome. Now, now those of you, go ahead. So this showing that it's a perennial. It'll produce seed each year, and then in the fall, like, I don't know if it'll bend down. You see that big bushy thing right behind yep. it? Yep. Yeah. That's coming off off of the roots. Oh. So once all the seed's ready, which it actually Getting close. is now, I can probably harvest it. Um, cut the stems, hang them upside down. I'll just cut the whole tree basically down and that one will replace it. Wow. All winter long, you'll eat greens all winter, yeah. all into the spring and I'll send up all the little drapini, which is a little broccoli looking thing. Hmm. And then you get more seed. Wow. But, wow. Yeah, everybody should actually break a little piece off of this and then get some seed because it's really rare. Yeah, so, I know okay. the yeah. little flower growth on there is really good. Oh, to yeah. eat, yeah. While I'm yeah. gardening, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's good. Awesome. Thank so, you. What kind of, what kind is that cool. like that oh, no. perennialness of it? Is, is that a tree color or is that a very specific? Color. It is a tree color. It is yeah. a tree color. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, but it's yep. really good. Actually, they have the same kind of plants. Yeah. Well, there you go. So, um, kale. Anybody, anybody familiar with kale? Yes. I want you, but but but, you notice when you eat kale, that it's bitter, the stem. You notice that when you buy it? Uh-huh. Watch this. Start at the stem because you okay. know it's going to be tough and stringy. Okay. And talk to us. Okay. <laughs> I'll do some stem. Somebody else. Do some stem. Oh, yeah. Is that bitter? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Isn't that awesome? Well, no, it's not. And this is August mm -hmm. when kale should not uh -huh. be good. Right. Wow. Oh, that's good. Isn't that awesome? It's and it's uh, you can chew it. <laughs> yes, and you know, you know you know what God showed me about bitter. It was really just interesting interesting um, reality. When people are eating my food and I'm getting everybody's telling me this is not bitter. I kind of, I'm supposed to learn something. So I asked him, what's about bitter? He said the reason food is bitter. Listen to me. This is really interesting. when plants grow in compacted dead soil, they struggle to put out roots. <clears throat> And they're expressing in their flavor their bitterness. Mm, that's <sighs> <cool>. <laughs> it's so right. Yeah. It's, they're frustrated. Yeah, when plants grow yep. in nutrient dense area of the soil, right. life was sweet. Mm -hmm. It was easy. Right. No sweat. Yep. And they taste sweet because that was the nature of their that's life. Yep. I that's love cool. nature. It's telling you the truth. <laughs> it's all about truth. Uh -huh. It's so yep. cool, man. Yep. It is. <laughs> Wow, look at that one. That's gorgeous. That's crazy for August. Isn't it? Isn't that amazing for August? You know, to be that sweet? But that's the nature of how it grew. It's growing in a sweet environment and it tastes like it. As if God intended it. As he intended it. God, God didn't, he's, he's not bitter and he made nothing bitter. He made everything sweet. Now you see the, you see this 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 pear tree. You see that this is a grafted. You see there's a, there's a red pear and you know, different varieties in the same tree. So, okay, so later you'll tell us about how you... I'm going to show you in a minute here okay. how to graft. Thank you. Because it's so easy. And what I'm going to share with you, you'll never see in the book. Because I asked the creator. And he blew my mind how simple it is. It's just like, so easy. Remember the word he says, come learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. It's at all levels. Everything about God is easy and not difficult. He made it that way. He's a good father. What, what father would make it hard for their kids? Yeah. 
What's that? I said it smells so good. Too. Yeah, everything, everything about God is good. Anybody growing potatoes? Yep, we are. How do those look to you? He said he loved them. Very healthy. Yep. Prolific too. And see around my tree. I love it. That's not asparagus. That's that's fennel. Yeah, eat it. It's really good. It's it's sweet. Yeah, see all that fennel under the tree over here. Eat it. It's really sweet. Isn't that good? Fennel. Can, can somebody try one of your turnips? Oh, yeah. Tell them to eat more. Everybody, these turnips are totally delicious. You won't believe it. Go ahead, pull, pull this turnip and eat it and just see how good it is. Just pull one? Yeah. And wipe it off. You, you'll be amazed at the flavor. And the greens are really good, too. See, right, right, right out here on the edge, get, the, so, get, get my walkway back from you. Right here. Isn't that good? Wow, that's amazing. Isn't it? It's delicious. It's re and wow. the, and this is really good food. I never thought I'd be eating a turnip raw <laughs> by itself. But you know, when you think about it, in the Garden of Eden, mm. God didn't yeah. God did not God did not issue them a stove or a refrigerator. That's true. Mm -hmm. And you know why it's full of water? Because it had roots to take up water. Mm -hmm. Had to get it somewhere. It's awesome, and, 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 and I want you to get that. You see how, how much water is in, in all my food? Mm -hmm. And this orchard has not been watered for 41 years. This is not about supplementary watering. Hi, good to see you. I'm serious, man. It's huge. See, this material holds water, like, really well. Aren't those good? And the, and the greens are really good, too. You'll, be, you, you eat the whole, you'll see those greens are really great. What variety of turnips are these? Hockerai. Hockerai. Yep. In Alaska, they grow them in like the fall, where they get a few hard frosts, and then they're like candy because like the sugar content gets so high in these. And then when they're cold, so like I like to pick them, put them in like an ice bath, and they're really crisp and like. That's a great idea. <laughs> where do you get the seed from? I got that seed from Johnny's, but there's so many different seed companies. You know how you spell it? Johnny's, J O H E N N E Y. Um, aren't they? Johnny's is in Maine, yeah. L look, at, look at the dog. Yeah. Oh, they understand. They know, how to, they know what good food is. They're also called white egg turnips. I don't know how to spell hawk or eye right off my top of my head. White egg or snow apple. <laughs> See, the, the dogs know how to, how to eat. That's right. And then as you guys walk past, That's there's a bunch of broccoli that needs to be picked. I didn't have time to do it again this week, so pick it. Thank you. <laughs> really good. <laughs> so everybody come over to this apple tree and I'll show you how to, I'll show you how to grab. All right. It's really easy. How do you get away with not wearing a hat all the time and being out in the sun all the time? <laughs> vitamin great. D vitamin D is good for us. Yes, it is. Yeah. I don't you, like you hats. Just, yeah. I hate hats. Yeah. So I'll you tell you why I hate hats. I'll, yeah. I'll give you a reason. I was in Vietnam, and in Vietnam, in the summer, the temperature is 120 degrees, 100 percent humidity, mm. and we wore steel pots. Oh wow! And all my hair fell out because oh. being mashed down like that. Right. Yeah. And so I shaved my head and it came back, but I have an aversion to hats. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're so welcome. Yeah, Paul, well, what's the name of this apple right here? This apple here is multiple varieties because I grafted. But the original tree is, is a Harleman. Is a what? Harleman. 
is the original. But again, if you look at my trees, you can see how totally open and hardly anything is there. But look at all the apples on them. I mean, could I get a break, please? <laughs> this is just too much. You know, and I do my best to try to reduce it, but it's not working. And so God's that's what say, I need to do to my four-year-old no. trees, is just go in there and cut everything off the top of them and, the, and just be, feel good about it. Yeah, and, and, and here's, and you know, John 15 says, the Father prunes the trees for what purpose? So they bear more fruit. Mm -hmm. You see, we look at pruning as a subtraction, but God looks at it as multiplication. Pruning, there's nothing can make your tree grow faster or produce more than cutting. It is phenomenal. So what do you say to the theory of reducing like, the fruit in the uh, The theory is, it's, it's a, not a theory, it's a lot of work. To go out and thin apples takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And I don't have it. So I'm trying to re not do that, but it's, you know, it's a challenge. Anyway, I want you to see something really cool here. You see this graft on the ground? You see these apples here are different than those. Mm -hmm. You see right there that black tape? Oh, yeah. That's where I grafted. Here's how you do it. Black tape. You want to get this cheap stuff from Taiwan because it'll stretch. The good U.S. stuff is too thick, it won't stretch. Got it. So here's how you do it. The only live part of the tree, you know, this isn't totally ripe yet, but if somebody want, wants to have, have a good apple, I mean, it's better than anything you'll buy, but it's not ripe, but you'll be, still be amazed at how good it is. The cambium layer, that's the green below the bark, is the only living part of the tree. Did you hear me? The interior wood is just there for support. It's not living. Did you hear me? The, the, the trunk wood, the sap wood is not living. That's why you see trees with cavities, no sap wood, no trunk wood, are thriving because the cambium is still attached. So what you want to do is where you want to graft, you take your saw and you cut this off straight. And you take your pruners and you go to the center and you split it. You cr crack it open. Then the piece you're grafting, you, you line it up to this, make sure it's exactly the same diameter, and you cut it at an angle like this, and you slide into the opening. And here's what's cool about tape. As you wrap with the tape, it pulls everything into alignment so the cambium's touching. Because it's wrapped tight with the tape, it's not going to move out of the way. Because it's wrapped tight with the tape, no air gets to it, so it doesn't dry out. And because it's black, when the sun hits it, it heals quicker. It's like off the charts how perfect it works, and it's so simple. Are you using any of the different products that you can buy, like Rutone? I mean, nothing. nothing. You see, wow. and, and I don't use grafting paste. I wow. use nothing but a roll of black tape. Right. So look, there's a graft right there. Yeah. There's one right over there. You see over here? Wow. See, see right there? You see, there's a graft. It's all over the place. And it works. So at some point, you had a friend who had a lot of trees that you could get grafts from. Well, people, I, because of the film, people, a lot of people know me. Right. And yeah. so they come here and says, I brought you some cyan wood. Uh -huh. I don't even know what this is yet. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to find out later. Uh -huh. I, don't even know the, I, don't, I don't even know the name of the thing. Yeah, you just did it. But I have it. And it's yeah. going to be a good apple. Not, yeah. not bad, huh? Not and it's not even ripe yet. And it's not, not, not bad. You know? When do you graft? Oh, that's so cool. The timing. You see, they tell you in the books... You cut your cyan wood when they're dormant. You know, January, February, you know, when it's really dormant. And then you store it in a cool place, and when the spring comes, you graft in. So I did that for years. Then one year, I had a, I had a client who had this gravenstein tree she paid, paid too much money for. Like, way too much. And I didn't realize why until I ate one of the apples. And I thought, wow, man, I got gravenstein. It'll taste like this. And so I took some cyan wood and grafted it into mine. So when I'm pruning here a couple of years ago, I thought, you know, I'm going to extend that because I want to get more of these. So I cut some cyan wood off. I laid it in the ground thinking I'm going to come back later to pick it up. But I spaced out and didn't do it. Forgot about it. So I'm, I'm there the next spring. I'm weeding on the ground. And I come across this cyan wood that I laid in the ground. And it's totally lift, leafed out, just like everything in the tree. And I'm yeah, thinking, like, it? it was laying on the ground. And it's totally leafed out. I'm thinking, like, God, talk to me. He says, that cyan wood get the, got the life force from the wood chips and it's totally thriving. It, and, and what that opened up to me was, what's up with keeping it in a cool place? Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing now when I graft, when I, when I prune, I just walk up to the tree and I graft. Same time. All in January. All in the January. same time. Wow. Why let it sit out there? It doesn't matter what time. It laid on the ground for the whole winter. Yeah. And was growing. Yeah. Wow. Totally thriving. So what's up with keeping it in a cool place? Mm -hmm. This is cool out here. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just, and I so love having these mistakes. 
<laughs> that open you up right. to these realities like right. it's much simpler yeah no kidding. <laughs> it's so cool i love it oh, wow. is the black tape you use electrician's tape yeah it's electrician's tape but it's the cheap stuff from taiwan <laughs> the thin stuff you see the good u.s stuff won't stretch it's really potent where do you find it any any hardware store okay. And you, you'll find it, it's the most common one on the shelf. Okay. The expensive one is hardly there, but look for made in Taiwan. Made in Taiwan. Taiwan. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, and it's so easy to use. You just wrap, you know, wrap it tight as you go. It stays, and when it's when it's, nice. cool, when it's finished, the, the the wood expands and the tape just falls off. Oh, nice. okay. There's just no work. You know, where you do it like the book, you have to have these pins hold together. You got to use you know gra grafting paste, mm -hmm. and it always moves. Nice. It doesn't stay. But this just keeps everything in place. And no air gets in there to dry it out. It's just like, it's the most perfect medium. And then eventually you're going to take the tape off. Right? No, well, I don't. Oh, as, as it grows, it just breaks and falls off. So how long, how long, has, how long has this graph been going then? That one, that one was last year. Last year, okay, wow. And that's already now let me, let me warn you, mm -hmm. everybody hear me. Because this is laying on the ground, I'm going to leave those apples. But if you get apples the first year on your graft, take them off because the union is not strong enough to hold the weight. And I had an experience. I was so excited. Look, I got four apples on my new graft. When they got big, I came over one day and the whole thing had hinged over and broken oh, off yeah. because it hadn't really okay. fused. But because this is on the ground, it's gone. Because it's on the ground, yeah. it's holding the weight. And I'll, I'll leave it. But so when it first happens, if you get fruit, take it off because you want to make sure the graft stays. Got it. Got it. But these are all things you learn from mistakes. Sure. You know? The, uh, to explain again on how to cut it. Okay, I will. You take your saw and you cut this off straight, 90 degrees, okay? Uh -huh. And then you take your hand pruners and you go to the center of this and you cut into it, split it. Oh, create right, a crack. Right down, yeah. Then the piece you're cut, you're, you're grafting, which is you line up, make sure it's the same diameter, you cut at an angle like that okay. so you can push into that opening. And once it's in there, as you wrap with the tape tightly, it pulls everything into alignment so the cambium's touching. It also keeps all the air out so it can't, you know, dry out and it can't move. And then when the sun hits it because it's black, it gets warmer and heals quicker. It's just, I mean, I mean, the advantages are amazing. And it's so simple. And this is nothing you'll ever see in a book. All grafting, no, no one's going to tell you to do this. But this is what you get when you ask the Creator. I love it. He has such great ideas. You know, and the word is very plain. It says you have not because you don't ask. Really. He's very generous. He wants to help us, but he waits on us to ask. You know why he waits on us to ask? He honors our free moral agency. He never overrides our will. I think that's amazing. He created us with choice and he never overrides it. That's why the word says, draw near to God, he'll work out your salvation because he works in you. But he, he waits on us to, to, to make the move because the ball's in our court. He made the first move by reconciling himself by Jesus Christ on the cross. The ball's in our court and he waits on us. It's really a big deal. People say, well, I never hear from God. Does he ever ask? No. Well, that's why. You got to ask. <laughs> Look at this corn growing under my tree. Is this, is this hilarious? Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. It's just, again, there's just, there's no limit. There's no ceiling. It's just amazing. Um, uh, yeah. like now these apples on the ground here, these are gravestine and these are getting close to ripe. Oh, and if you, if you want to get a, 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 a hint of what a good apple tastes like, that's getting close. Okay. Which ones these here? Or the one, one? ones on the ground. Oh, is, is, is it? oh okay. Hmm. Way better than ones in the store. When my apples get ripe, they are off the charts. I'm serious. I mean, the flavor is just completely amazing. You know how good they are. How do you know that they're um, close to ripe? I know my dear know it, figure it out before I do. Here's what's interesting about apples. The enzymes that cause it to, to, to ripen don't happen to seven to, de seven to ten days before they're ripe. It's really interesting how God created them. That's why all the stuff you buy in the store aren't ripe. There's no enzymes present. And so it's a real detriment to your body because your body has to create enzymes to break it down. It's huge. Wow. Maybe that's why I react weird to apples. Yeah. I had a, 
this guy's reacting. Let me tell you something that happened here. A young boy came on a tour, nine years old, and he's telling me, I'm allergic to apples. I says, no, you're not. He says, you don't understand. I swell up. I says, I understand. You're reacting to all the pesticides, fungicides, and poisons in the, that's in the apple from how they grew them. While you're here, you can eat all the apples you want, you want to have interaction. No way, you, I says, you'll see. So these, these people over here, this Akani apple over here is just like, when it comes in, the aroma is off the charts. You can just smell it. And people are, can you believe this flavor? And this kid couldn't take it anymore. So he took one, three quarters way through, he's yelling, there's like 60 people out here. He's yelling, I'm not reacting. I'm not reacting. I says, get it. Wow. There's nothing wrong with your body. The apple is wrong. And now you know, you know that if you find good apples, you could eat them. You're okay. So when God always does this confirmation thing in the mouth of truth. So the next week, a woman comes from upper state New York with three kids. She's allergic to apple. And she ate three apples back to back with no reaction. It was so cool. It's amazing. Nothing's wrong with our bodies. And all the effect reactions we're having to food is because the food is poisonous. Really. It's a big deal. So I'm telling you, you got to grow your food. And you see, see, the first thing you want to plant in your garden are fruit trees. Because they'll feed you for generations. And then you can grow all your produce under them. And you just saw today that you can do that. Because wow. you thought you couldn't. They told you, you can't grow stuff under trees. But now you know better. <laughs> I couldn't eat oranges for many years, even at Whole, Whole Foods, BCC, mm -hmm. organic, doesn't matter. I have a friend in Arizona that has uh, orange trees in his backyard, and I flew down there. And he was making some fresh orange juice and said, you want some? I said, oh, I can't. I said, I'll feel like I'm crippled for the next, like, two days. Mm -hmm. I just get joint sure. pain and everything. Because they're poisonous. Ate it. You're good. No, no reaction. Listen, God made everything good. Yep. Everything. When he went out on the inspection every day, because no one was higher than him, this is good. This is very good. He meant it. But if they say they're organic and you're getting them from PCC... Let me tell you about organic. Are they irradiating our food? Let me tell you about organic. Remember the scripture says in the end times, what they'll call evil, good and good evil? Yeah. We're there. Mm -hmm. Let me give you the demonstration. I grow carrots in my garden. Yeah. My dog picks them up, pulls them out and eats them. My wife goes to the store and buys organic carrots and my dog won't eat it. So I'm angry. Yep. I go to the owner and says, what's up with this? He says, Paul, they were raised organically, but the producer sprays them for shelf life. Your dog's oh, picking them on the spray. Wow. Oh they may have raised them organically, but once the, the pr producer gets them, they do whatever they want to it. Okay. And let me tell you something else about organic. Organic farmers are only putting NPK back. Whether it's organic or not, it's only NPK. <laughs> There's far more minerals in the life force than NPK. And this is why even organ organic food doesn't taste good. It's really not good. Right. Yeah. It's pathetic. And let me tell you something scary. My wife went and bought some, some lettuce from the co-op in town, yep. organic. Yep. So some of the outer leaves were wilted, so I flew to the chickens. Chickens wouldn't eat it. Uh -huh. So I came and told my wife, I says, Carol, that organic wow. lettuce you, you bought is not clean. Chickens aren't eating it. See, my chickens tell me the truth. Right, right. They will not eat poisonous food. They won't. They know, they have instinct and they can tell right away what's safe to eat or not. Mm -hmm. wow. So I tell people, if you want to know what's safe to eat, take your dog to the store. Mm -hmm. If the dog won't eat it, it's not safe. They know. I'm serious. Yeah, I believe my that. dog eats everything out of my garden here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They love it. Mm -hmm. But if you give them dead food, right. they won't eat it. Mm -hmm. They know. So, 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 so the, the, the terms anymore, Aren't don't real. Mean anything. Don't mean yeah. anything. Yeah, and they made sure of that. Yeah, they've made sure. Yeah. Of that. So this is this is why you're here today, and this is why I'm doing this. We all need to grow our food, mm -hmm. really. Right. We need to for our health sake. I agree. Because this, what's happening now, we're all sick today because we're malnutrition. Yep. Really. Yep. The bottom line is malnutrition. I'm not drug deficient. I've never been. If I'm sick, it's because I'm got not, not getting enough nutrients in my food. And you know what's been just so cool in my experience? I can't even remember the last time I had a headache. I never, been, I haven't been sick for decades. I have absolutely no pain. And this COVID thing, I could be around it anywhere, and it would never touch me because mm -hmm. my immune system is powerful right. and it works well. Right. I can't get sick. It can't happen. I, well, uh, over here, I got a plant in the garden. I had, I had last week three people with stomach aches 
mm. that ate my, ate my, my uh, um, it's, it's chicory, and totally within minutes, the summer cake was gone. Really? Wow. I'm telling you, man, I just get blown out mm -hmm. at how powerful food is. Mm -hmm. It's wow. amazing. It's just totally, and God made it that way. This is intentional. It is our this is not an accident. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's by intent. And, and here's the word you see in Revelation. He created leaves for the healing of the nations. Mm -hmm. Not pharmaceuticals, not drugs, leaves for the healing of the nations. It's huge. Yeah. It's a big deal. Yeah. You, when you were talking about the organic foods and the farmers planted something in there, I think you said three letters? MPK, Which nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Okay. See, those are the only minerals that all farmers are putting back. Some do it synthetically, others do it organically. But my point is, there's far more minerals in the life force than that. Right, I get that. Yeah. And those are necessary for our body. And in this environment with these wood chips, right. they're okay. all there. Okay. Right. They're all there. And this is why my food tastes good. You know, God created us with taste buds for a reason. You know why they're there? To enjoy our food. No, to, to, to identify our food, to recognize whether it's good or not. Mm -hmm. Really. And here's the thing that amazes me about the human race. For 6,000 years of human history, you have no record of anybody using salad dressing. Did you hear me? We have 6,000 years of recorded human history, no record of any salad dressing being used. In 1948, when they changed how they fed the soil mm. with chemical fertilizers, mm. the salad started tasting really bad. It didn't taste good. And instead of human beings waking up and thinking, what changed? Salad used to be good, how come it's not? They buried it over with salad dressing to try to hide and disguise the funky taste. Yeah. Are you kidding me? If it doesn't taste good, you shouldn't eat it. It's not good. Really? Really? And we just eat this nasty stuff covered with sugar and salad dressing and put up with it. And we wonder why we're sick? I mean, it's so obvious. It's so simple. Duh. And if you notice, is there anything here you, that you ate that wasn't good? Nope. Well, get, get it. Your taste buds work, your brain's attached, and you get it. This is good food. This is normal. This is how it's supposed to be. Right. <laughs> and we're not using salad dressing. Right. And we're okay. Yeah. It's so simple. Gorgeous color this tree was. It's so beautiful. Yeah, this is a from Japan. Oh, this is the this is, this is the, the aroma. You can take one of these apples when they're ripe and put it in your house, yeah. and your whole house will fill with the aroma. Yeah. It is amazing. The aromatic quality of that apple is just off the chart. The Japanese, you know, there's not a lot, a lot of room in Japan. If they have apple varieties, they're good. They have no room for junk. And that's, that, this one here's another, this is T-S-U-G-U-R-A. This is an amazing apple. T-S-U-G-U-R-A. When that thing gets ripe, the flavor is just completely off the charts. It's so good. Now, is anybody growing zucchini? Uh -huh. Check out that plant. How does that look to you? Look at the color of that foliage. You know, I've been gardening for 65 years, and this totally gets my attention. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have that when I used to rototill and fertilize and do all the work. Exactly. And you know what I love about this? I just put a seed in the ground and walked off. It hasn't been watered, fertilized, nothing. No attention. It just, it just happens. Well, what time of year did you put that seed? I planted, I planted that first of May. May, okay. May 1st. It's just, it's, it's so encouraging. I'm telling you, this gets me off. Yeah. I mean, it's just, this just really ministers to my spirit. This is powerful. Mm -hmm. And when I'm realizing I didn't do anything, right. 
I didn't labor. I didn't fertilize. I didn't water. I did nothing but a stick, a seed in the ground and walked off. Right. And that happens. I mean, it is, it's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Yay, God. <laughs> so this is a power cord here. Then? This is a power cord, yeah. It's coming from, it's, it's going out. He, 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 he's, he's raising chickens. Mm -hmm. He had a little, must have been little baby chickens. He had a light on it to keep him warm. He's, he's got them now. He's got them now out in the pasture. They're, they're old enough to, to where they can make it on their own. Some there's a few raspberries left. It's just about over, but they're really good if you can find any. Don't you love it? You, you, see, you see, this this just gives you so much more production for your land space. Yeah, exactly. You see, you can, get the, you can use all this space and the, and the tree in the same space. So it's just, you know, it's all about multiplication. God is just generous. He's so cool. goes against the conventional... Oh, completely against it because it's all lies. Amy, look at this. Isn't that awesome? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's huge. And this, this gets absolutely no water or fertilizer. And how this happened, I put a seed in the ground and walked off. That's, wow. I'm just telling you, you know, having garden for 65 years and really worked hard to fail, this just really does something for me. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. ah, yeah. this is awesome. <laughs> and no, it's just, and, and just density. I mean, you know, stems, leaves everywhere. It's just totally crowded because it can be. <laughs> you to get from there to doing this level of here's what it is it's progressional every year it gets better mm -hmm. it's it's progressional and it's never there's no ceiling it's not gonna ever stop mm -hmm. that's what I love about it you see as this material lays on the ground it's composting and water goes through it it creates compost tea that feeds the soil that condition never ends when you have exposed soil whatever you put on is dissolved and it's over it's gone but this is a constant support, 24-7, 365 days a year, soil is always upgraded. It's so powerful. And it's so simple. And long, gravity does all the work. How long did it take you to get to a, a, a firm base? Like, was it two or three years? Like, from the first time you laid down chips to actually being able to just put a seed and walk away, how long do you think that would take? Well, well you see the weeds out here? No. <laughs> I didn't plant those. There's one right there. A little green thing. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't plant that. Uh -huh. It happens right away. Okay. It's huge. And you know what it is? It's called repentance. When you repent and come back to the natural order, God's like standing at the gate. I want to bless you. I want to give. But I ha you had to come my way. It's so huge. I love these principles in God are in everything. It's repentance. And once I repented, corrected, everything just flies because it's supposed to. Wow. It's, it's, it's so amazing. The spirit realm is so real. It's so real. Wow. I love it. That's awesome. Repentance is so cool. Just correct. Don't stay wrong. And when you correct, everything just aligns and does great because it's supposed to. Wow. <laughs> it's so fun. Yeah, if you can find them, they're really good, but they're, 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 it's pretty much the end of the season. We've been eating them for quite a few weeks. They've been so good. Sunflowers. Yeah, eat it. Pick a pick a leaf and eat it and see how good it is. And then cilantro right next to it. Sample that cilantro. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Wow. And this is August. 
Most people aren't growing spinach no. in August. Wow. Yeah, sa sample it. Eat, eat some leaves, see how good they are. Can we step in? What's that? Can we step in? Can we go in? Well, no, here, you go out over there and then come back around. But actually, because actually, I don't want you not, so I'm going to put an irrigation system in my garden. So, um, so if you just walk around here and then come over there, but I want you to sample the cilantro. Now, now, this stretch in here, don't walk on because I just planted this. But where he is, you can walk. And I want, uh, th that's that, um, I was talking about that uh, chicory. That plant there, you should sample, that is, yeah, that is really potent food. It's awesome. Mason bees. Yeah, Mason bees. Yeah, they're they're great pollinators. They're so good. Yep. They just want holes in wood to live in. <laughs> Is that did you get some cilantro? Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? Wow, yes. It's supposed to be. Cilantro really tastes good. But the stuff in the store doesn't taste like that. Yeah, go over, go over there and, and um, here, I want you to do something. The lady says you love it. You see over there where it's bolting? Mm -hmm. Break off the stuff that's bolting and eat it and see how, you'll be blowing out how good it is. Amy, look at these. Mason, see I have mason bees. These, these are my, ma this is my, my base, mason bee houses. Did you make those blocks yourself? I have got the blocks of wood. I just drilled the holes in them. Quarter inch drill, quarter inch nice. holes. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, they're, they're they're great. They're great pollinators, mm -hmm. and they won't sting you. They're just like like big yeah, big so um awesome. big flies. You and some of them are really pretty, like iridescent. Yeah, they're great. Did your mom get mason bees? I think she got a little house for them. Okay. This, this, no, this, this is a hand pump. If my power goes out, I'm still gonna have water. You want if you want you can, you can pump it and, and watch it work if you want. Okay. Yeah, just, it's good, good upper, upper, good upper body exercise. You're gonna, you're gonna lift water 130 feet, so it takes a little while, but you'll, you'll get water. Yeah, it's upper body exercise. Anybody have a water bottle? Wow. This is really going to be nice cold water. Yeah, this is this is coming right from the well, man. This is see how nice and cold that is. Wow. That is so cool. that you say that comes from the from the uh, mountains? This, this is it. Oh, is this it? Yeah, that's it. That's, that comes under, under, underneath the ground, 130 feet, it comes out of the glaciers of the Olympics. Oh. We missed you last week. We, we thought, man, Robin didn't make it for her um, CSA box. I know because I have been working non stop. So oh. Yeah, we noticed it. You everything together. You know. <laughs> yep. You know what it's like. Sure. Yes, you certainly do. I took her off the dry food. 
Work is my quirk. I don't <laughs> shirk from the work. <laughs> Is that corn over there? Yeah. Oh my word. Is that is that like 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 it's gonna get tall? <laughs> Maybe to twenty feet. <laughs> and it hasn't even headed up yet, man. It's oh my it's, word. it's gonna really go. Oh my word. My word. Yes. I'm so happy I've met you. Oh bless you. The girls they can't handle the heat. Oh I'm sorry. Okay. I'll probably be up here again if you don't mind me coming back. Oh yeah, I'll I'll be doing this at the end of September, so you're welcome. Did, did, did you get some cilantro? No, I didn't. Eat it. It's really good. Right there. Right there. Okay. Do you mind if I grab one of your uh, 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 beets? Not at all. Help yourself. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> They're good. Yeah. They're delicious beets. We see the bees back here. On yeah. The Are they the leaf cutter? Oh, the, 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 the bees? Uh -huh. Here, don't walk on it. I got, I'm coming this side. Because I just planted that to spinach. Oh, but yeah, you're, you're fine over here. Sorry. Yeah, just, just pick some of that cilantro and see how good it is. Yeah, the bees, the bees are the mason bees for the um, pollinators. Okay. Flavor. Isn't that good flavor? Okay. Do you grow ginkgo? Yeah, at the end of, end of my driveway, I have a ginkgo tree. Yeah, yeah eat that. That that is really potent. What is this? That's called um, chicory. Oh, but man, we're talking. That is talking really. About. Eat it. You'll see. I mean, this is really po powerful food. So you're making, the leaves, it's but yeah, leaves just that people eat, right? yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, this is what they do in substitute for coffee. It's chicory. Yeah. It's a coffee substitute, uh -huh. I think. It was from the south. Oh, it is. Uh, my wife, my wife got that from from Greece, yeah, the seed. That is some but I, stuff. I had three people last week with stomach aches. Mm -hmm. That in eating this in just a short time, the stomach ache was gone. Wow. I mean, it was like amazing how effective it was. Mm. I missed out. What was it? Oh, chicory. chicory. Go eat oh, it. The chicory good for um, stomach aches. This was three people. Oh yeah. This was like it was amazing how this totally got over their stomach ache. But this guy made carne asada tacos, and mm -hmm. instead of putting lettuce or something, he put ginkgo leaf. It's the best taco I ever had. Yeah, well, I have a ginkgo tree at the end of the road. <laughs> so, Paul, I'm sorry, but the girl oh, it's okay. handle the heat. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. It's, Take care. I'm, fasc I'm fascinated by you, and you're a great guy. Oh, Thank you. God. you know? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice seeing you again. Lovely. <laughs> Anybody not get, not get cilantro? Right here. Yeah. Okay. Walk, on, walk on walk this on this side. side. Okay. And then and then I, you can go you can you see go where you, you see you see where it's bolting? Yep. Pick that, you'll see you'll be amazed at how no go down deep. Oh. Yeah, get get a take a stem off and see how good it is. Okay. Now start at the stem and eat that, just see how the, okay. the, the flavor. Mm. Isn't that good? Yeah. Usually when things are bolting, oh, yeah. they're they're tough and bitter. This isn't. Yeah, very good. Yum. We're going to take a group picture real quick. Break kind of this. Now, the only, you, you know the only individuals in the world that don't eat the apple core are human beings. Every animal eats the apple core. And the core is the most nutritious part of the apple. Aren't the seeds poisonous? No. There's cyanide in the seed, but the enzyme in the apple turns the cyanide into a beneficial, so it's edible? like, whatever it's called. You ever look at a cow and a horse? They eat the whole apple. They don't, they don't leave a core. And, the, and the, probably the most nutritious part is the center. Wow. It's just so crazy how we humans operate. Let, let me share something with you about cilantro. Everybody hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cilantro reveals the heart of the father like no other produce. Let me explain. On the third day when God created cilantro, he had you in mind. Because cilantro is a natural chelator and takes heavy metals out of your body. For 6,000 years, the human race didn't have any issue with heavy metals in their body because everything was growing naturally, organically. With the introduction of chemical fertilizers, heavy metals started developing in soils. You know what's scary about your food today? All root vegetables are full of heavy metals, all of them. Because the root vegetable takes out the heavy metals and stores all, all the heavy metals in their, in, their, in their tissue, which is the root. So all carrots, all beets, all potatoes, everything you buy in the store is totally packed with heavy metals. So here's, here's the heart of the Creator. He created cilantro having us in mind, this generation. 
because cilantro will take heavy metals out of your body. It's a natural chelator that takes heavy metals out of your body. I think that is huge. He didn't miss anything. Yeah. He didn't miss anything. He had us, us all covered. And so I'm growing this stuff like you, constantly. I, you know, I got uh, over there because I'm eating it all day long, all year long because, and let me tell you how cool it is how to have it all year. If you plant, if you live in this area, if you plant the 1st of September cilantro seed, it comes up quite quickly because it's still warm, but in October it cools off, so it doesn't bolt. Mm -hmm. And it stays in the garden for the whole winter. Mm -hmm. And in April it starts growing again. And I have cilantro the entire year. It is so awesome. And I've had it get four degrees and it killed all my, killed all my kale, but the cilantro wasn't killed. Wow. It's, such a, it's such a powerful plant. It is. It's really huge. How nutritious this is. And you know cilantro has the highest vitamin C content of anything that grows. No orange, no citrus has the vitamin C that cilantro has. It's off the charts. And parsley it's, is like a diuretic. Like yeah, parsley is a natural, it's yeah. full of chlorophyll. You know, I got yeah. parsley right there. Yeah. So all these things that God made are just totally good for us. You know, and it's just amazing. Now, you know what time of year this is? This is August. Do you know, you know what lettuce looks like in the garden this time of year? Wilted. <laughs> I want you to look at my lettuce right behind you. That variety of lettuce is grown in Israel where it's a hot desert. It's awesome. It's called Jericho and it is the most amazing summer, summer romaine on the planet. It is totally awesome. And you see what I've done? You see, as soon as my lettuce is big enough to pick, I, pe I plant the next row. Right here yes. is the next one coming. So I always have it coming consecutively. Yeah. Right. You never wait for it to get bad. Just right. keep planting. Mm -hmm. And it just, you have it coming. How many, weeks, how many weeks growth is this one? That's probably um, maybe three weeks. Three weeks? Okay. Now you, you now, cut that off and let it grow back. And yeah. Grow now, now, now you see that all that romaine over there is really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you guys don't take that today... I'm going to feed it to the chickens tomorrow. Oh, wow. So I want all of you to have a nice salad tonight. Okay. So just pull the whole thing up and take it home because that is the really... The whole thing. Okay. Shake off the, 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 okay. the compost, but you'll be amazed at how good it is. It's really nice lettuce. But I can say, if you don't take it, I'm going to feed it to the chickens. Right. What's that? Eight more people. Give me eight. Oh, oh. everything else. Eight more? Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh, got it. Okay. What about your green beans? What variety are they? I don't know, but go, we'll pick them. They're good to eat. They are. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if you need more more lettuce, you can use you can use this too. Oh, okay. 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 I'm, I'm, ta I'm ta talking to Nick. Yeah, there's because oh, okay. there's so much, man. It's just <laughs> now you see how easy that came out of the ground. Yeah. Your soil is completely different from mine. And 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 here I want you to notice something. This is I want you I want everybody to look at this. You see, when you plant stuff in, your, in a typical dirt garden, when you pull it up, the ground's compacted and hard below. If you look at that soil, yeah. it's like nothing was there. Right. Right. There was no change. And I can come up, I rake, rake it out, and I can plant right. the next day, and it's going to do better because it's living soil. Mm -hmm. It's not dead. It's I'm just, I'm telling you, man, this is awesome. Yeah. And I'm, I just get so off it because oh, I used to work so hard to fail. Oh, yeah. And this is just no work. Right. And it just keeps getting better. Because it can't help it. It's just so cool. Good food is just yeah. so awesome. Mm -hmm. It's so satisfying. It's like, yes, mm -hmm. this is this is right. This so is we're here in, here in Squim too. Did you just have this hard everywhere you go oh, and it's, it's rock, just rock, right? If you go to the bathroom behind my house. Yeah. You'll see my soil. It's, it's compacted clay and rock. You can't break it with a pick. That's what we've got. And that's, that's what this was. And so you just, you, you don't even, do you dig the first, like, rocks? Do you dig some rocks out? You don't When even... I planted my tree, I had to use a bar and a pick to get them in the ground. Got it. Okay. But you know what? I, I took one out. You see that, that pear tree is right next? That yeah. Old? You know what was awesome about that? Two, a year ago, I took that out. I had a big apple tree there. I gave it away. And what blew my mind, I took that apple tree out with a rake. Because the soil was, and I'm down two feet, and it's blocked, and I'm flipping out. I'm thinking, like, I remember what this yeah, was. Yeah. And you know what the Holy Spirit showed me, gave me? As we behold the Lord, we're being changed from glory to glory. As my soil got under the, under the covering of God, it changed 
from glory to glory. I'm just telling you, man, it is off the charts. Mm -hmm. yeah. These principles in God are in everything. Right. And right. my soil is not the same anymore. Right. It's being changed. Wow. From glory to glory. It's like, I couldn't believe it, man. I'm down two feet and it's this gorgeous black soil where it used to be <laughs> concrete mm -hmm. and rock. I couldn't break with a pick and I didn't do anything. Right. I didn't do anything. Just wood chips laying on it changed it all. I'm just, I don't know about you, but I just get so off yeah. Yeah. on oh, yeah. these, on these oh, experiences yeah. because they're so powerful. Right. Yeah. yeah. They're like completely off the charts, yeah. you know, so you couldn't do that. So to start in this soil, you would just, you would just lay down cover. Cover. You just lay and, down and, and cover just, and, and not and, and, do anything with the... If you look in nature, mm -hmm. the creator never shows up to work. Right. Are you getting it? Yeah, I am. <laughs> he made it that way. Yeah. So you and just lay down he, and he says and to you, come learn of me, mm -hmm. follow me around, watch what I do. Right. My yoke is easy, right. my burden is light, and he's telling you the truth. So the only way you moved any rock out was just if you needed to Let me tell you what there. I did. Okay. You see over there, there's a lot of flowers stuff, but below my forerunner is a whole bed of rocks. Okay. And that used to be very deep. Yeah. Let me tell you how brain dead I am. I had this orchard going day one under wood chips with no work and being productive. And I rode and tilled this garden for 17 years yeah. and I took all the rocks out with my wheelbarrow and hauled over there. You know what that rock pile is now? <laughs> that you know what that rock pile is now? It's my altar. Yeah. <laughs> it's an altar and every time I walk by it, it reminds me of the insanity of not asking God. So there. Let, me tell you, let me tell you about the stupidity of taking, the stupidity in uppercase letters of taking rocks out of your garden. What are rocks? Define minerals. them. Minerals. They're minerals. And you're taking minerals out of your garden? Well, when it's that big, yeah. <laughs> I have a place in Squim on an acre and a, uh, on an acre and a quarter that's a rock, it's 75% rock. It's a, it's, it was a riverbed. That's yeah. what I have. And I am growing the most amazing fruit trees and garden and orchard in that place. Wow. And all I did was plant the stuff in the rocks, put witches over it, and it was thriving. Mm -hmm. okay. All you do is cover. Gotcha. Let me tell you something about rock. You see my gravel driveway? Yep. Mm -hmm. Up against my house, my wife has a planter box, mm -hmm. a nice potter, and that thing went to seed. And it fell on my crushed rock driveway in August with no rain. There's this total mass, mass, m m m total mass of bright green produce mm -hmm. growing out of crushed rock that wasn't planted with no water. And I'm telling people, if you can't get wood chips, you can use crushed rock. It'll make a great cover. Right, And right. you can grow an amazing garden. And you know what's interesting? I have strawberries over the edge of, my, edge of my driveway, and they've moved out of the wood chips into the crushed rock. You know where they're the greenest? In the crushed The ones in the crushed rock are greener than the ones in the wood chips. Mm. And I'm thinking like, wow. Wow, well, because of all the minerals. Minerals. And so a guy comes here on a tour, and he says, you know what God told me to do? I've got this major chronic illness. And he told me to put a rock in my glass and drink water mm -hmm. with that rock in there. Mm. And I says, I hear you. I get it. Minerals. Oh, Minerals. Right. Here's something I learned in California as a kid. We wanted to go fishing in August in California, Los Angeles. There's some nice lakes there. But good luck finding worms. Because in August, the ground is baked hard as a rock. <laughs> And there's no worms. Yeah. But yeah. you know how you find worms? You find a large rock and you roll it over. It's damp it's underneath, underneath. And it says two things. One, the rock retains moisture and releasing minerals to feed the worm. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I'm just telling you, if you simply pay attention to things that are in your face in nature, they're speaking volumes right, right. Of, of knowledge. Right. It's huge. Yeah. It's totally huge. It's amazing. You, know, you, you, you drive along the, the mountain ranges, you look off the side of the road at these dark green hemlock, firs, cedar trees growing out of solid rock. There's no dirt and they're thriving and they're bright green. Well, it's telling you they're getting mineral content from the rocks. This is my, this is our new dog. Someone just gave this to us. We're, it's, this is going to be the most amazing dog. This is a Pyrenees. And, and she, he is so smart. I'm just, I'm so thankful for that dog. Wow. He, so sweet. 
He's going to keep all the livestock safe and all the deer out of here. Uh-huh. You got a job, my friend. And he'll do it. Yeah. He's 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 a he's a smart guy. He's What's his name? His name is Micah. Yeah, he's he's special. He's just a special gift. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, listen, we're not done. Um, Nick will take you down. He's, he's got a nice garden over there, and then we'll end up in my herb garden over here. So I want to take you to my herb garden. Okay. Now, l l let me tell you, if you guys have property, you have, if you if you have a property and you have a septic system, you have a drain field. Use your drain field to plant your garden over, uh -oh. because you have sub irrigation. All you see that herb garden over there. I have never watered that because you can see you can see in there it's kind of there's three dark lines of green grass. Yep. My drain field goes right through the herb garden and it's sub irrigating all my plants. Wow. And so I'm recycling all my wastewater. Nice. Yeah. And again, it's just, this, this is just it's again, there's it's so many resources we have that we don't yeah. think about how to use. Right. You know, and I'm just I'm just blessed. Nothing in my yard's wasted. Everything that I create here nice. is being reused, nice. you know, and because it should be that way. That's good stewardship. That's, you know, being, making good use of your resources. Don't waste things. And so your drain field will create a great place. You don't want to plant trees there because you, they'll get in the, in the but the, 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 the produce doesn't have deep roots, but you have sub-irrigation that will feed them really well. Yeah. Wow. And I can't remember you Five kids or seven. Seven. Seven, That's seven children. Wow. How many? Yeah. Do they all? Do they live around? Or the, they all I have one in Europe. They're, they're all around. Okay. And people ask me, do they? Do they eat good food? I says, listen, if you grew up on nutrient dense food, would you be satisfied with counterfeit? Right. Nope. They know what food is. They yeah. all have gardens, right. and if they don't, they come here and get food because yeah. they know what good food is. And right. They lived on it, and right. this, and the counterfeit just doesn't satisfy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know they're all healthy, never none immunized, right. totally well. Right. And um, because yeah. you can't help but be well by eating good food. Right. It's just yeah. you know, right. we're we're not drug deficient. I don't need immunization. Right. My right. body knows how to. If I get measles, my body builds immunity to it. I'll never get it again. Right. It knows how to work. Right. It doesn't need help. And all the synthetic garbage you're giving me is poisonous. Right. And I'm not going to put up with it. Right. Get some beans. They're really good. Thank you. Green beans. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. I Bless you. I didn't know about you till today. Really? Yeah. How, how'd you How'd you hear? Well, my friend. Came up, I'm doing a school here right now, oh. and my friend came to visit me, and she'd seen you on TV. Her, she and her husband, they were talking about learning about mushrooms. Uh -huh. So, oh. so she said, "Well, this is what I heard. This place is nearby." Cool. So yeah, well, I'm glad so you came. Glad here? Hey, there's a, there's a latch. You gotta you gotta put you gotta put that latch on. Oh, gosh. I, don't the, I don't want the sheet coming out. Well, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Yeah, go. Yeah, would you, would you just close the gate behind you because I don't want the sheet come out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate just the sharing of all that the Lord has given you, and then sharing the produce so we can taste it and yeah, and just yeah, your yeah, who God made is pretty special. So it is. It is, and 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 I want people to get it. He's good. Amen. He's really good. He is. And 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 he's been misrepresented big time. And I'm over it. I want people to see how good he is. <laughs> yeah, so those are sheep. That are those are sheep, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we had three. We're born. Three were born here this year. Oh, really? I gave one. I gave one to my brother. He he, he needed he needed a, a male for breeding. Uh -huh. And then um, and then there's one ewe. We'll keep it. And the other two we'll butcher. And I I just feed them to the. I feed the meat to my dogs. Right. Because dogs really do well on raw meat. Right. Yeah. You know, so it's just great. All recycle, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you use the wool? This no, you see now. See, these, these are not wool sheep. They're 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 they're, they're, they're hair sheep. They don't have wool. Oh, they're you, look, look, look how short look how short their hair is. Oh, oh I they're see. not for wool. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. 
So they're, they're not used for any. No, these, these are basically raised for meat. meat. That was, you know, the, the breed. Yeah, for the dogs. What's that? For the dogs. Good dog food, yeah. The the dogs, they love it. And, you know, they they eat all the bones and everything. But it's just, you know, raw meat is so good for them. Yeah, but they're dogs. And they have very very short digestive systems. They can handle it. It's good for them. Yeah. So, again, it's just, again, this, you know, the whole idea of, you know, on your space, growing everything you need is just, to me, is just such a key thing, you know. Because, you know, it's going to come to the place where there won't be anything in the stores. There won't be, there won't be. In the store. and so we and, and so we need to right. be, you know, coming yes. to that place where we can live without stores. Exactly. So I'm growing this thing called purslane. Oh, it's so good. It's I love per, I, I love purslane. It's so delicious, man. Yeah. It's really really easy good. To grow. Very easy, and and just nice big thick leaves. It's just right. I love that stuff. It's so right. good. And the stems are delicious. Yeah, all of it. Just and again, just the, you know the. Um, the reality of always feeling good and never being sick. Oh, hallelujah, honey. It just, oh, it's just, to me, yeah. this is normal. This oh. is how it's supposed to this be. This is how it's supposed to it's be. It's supposed to be like this. And it's just, yes. and it was just so cool seeing these three people last week getting over their, getting over their stomach ache. Stomach ache, yes. I love it. I love Yay it. Yay, God, this is yeah, so awesome, really. you know. No, is... no, no, you know, diuretic or anything. No, no, um, you know, um, antacid. No, no, you know, just no, no, no drug. No, just no drug simple food, no you know. And, and it was fast, like it didn't take long. It was just like totally right. took, took it out. Get it, loud and clear. And I'm um, so grateful. I expect that um, you will be here for decades and decades. Well, I don't, I don't think we have decades and decades left. I think, here on planet Earth? I, yeah, I, th- I think things are coming to an end. We, we'll have a thousand years after when Jesus returns. Whatever, but, whatever, but, but, um, whatever but, but I, we have. I pray that you're here. Well, I'm going to be here for the next thousand years. I know that. Yeah, right. But after that, I don't know where I'm going to be, but it's okay. Who knows? But, but it's, wherever, it is, wherever it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I and, am um, just so grateful that there are people like yourself who are fearless and know that it's in your gut that your health resides. It's not. Yeah. It's not a mask. It's 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 it's, it's main and and, it's, and it has to be maintained. It's supported. You ha- you support health. You know. You support health. Yeah. Yes. And live food is phenomenal. How well it works. <laughs> it really works amazing. <laughs> and it doesn't cost anything. It's free, and it's abundant. There's no end of it, <laughs> and it keeps getting better. <laughs> Yeah, I put down mulch in my um, backyard at the farmhouse, mm-hmm. and I started putting in some compost underneath the mulch, just you know, mm-hmm. playing. And all of a sudden, there is there are plants coming up. There sure. Are squash plants. Yeah, yeah. Has some, so you had some cute. had some seed in there, and it's growing. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, and again, it's just, and this shows us how this system is completely designed to take care of itself. Yes. It doesn't need help. Yes. It's, it's to... built in. It knows how to work. Yeah. You just have to help support the... Yeah, support it. Support it, yes. Yeah. How's Carol doing? Carol's good. Fantastic. He's doing great. Send her my love. I will. So there's this uh, Dr. Michael Greger, who's an epidemiologist for 27 years. And there's a little um, film called Take the Pandemic Off the Menu. Good. All right. And he says that all of these um, pandemics, flus, da-da-da, have been created by um, animal, animal you know whether it was weaponized in a lab or in the world. Well, yeah, AIDS is a, is a bovine virus. Exactly. It was and all created in, la- in laboratories in, yeah. with intent. I mean, this is this is not accidental. No, it was, it was not evil accident. intent. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a bo- it's all bo- it's a bovine virus. Didn't come from a monkey. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was so sad. The guy, we were in Los Angeles. This guy was in, in Glendale, California. When AIDS came out, yeah. the insurance company, his name was Dr. Strecker, and they hired him. He's a, he's a um, 
pathologist. Yeah. And they hired him to investigate where this is coming from because they wanted to be prepared to deal with all their um, you know, claims. And he says, this is a bovine virus. This was created in a lab. And one night coming home from work, they found his car at the bottom of the hill. They took him out. They killed him. Paul, did you develop this plot or was it was the house already built when you No, came? when I came here, there was nothing. I built everything on this property I put here. When I came here, there was nothing. I built the house, everything That's awesome. we put here. Wow. That's amazing. It's a log house because I lived in Los Angeles where we had earthquakes. Mm. I got so tired of patching up my plaster. <laughs> I said, I'm going to build something that can flex. Uh -huh. And that house, the interior walls, is exactly like it did 30 years ago when I, 41 years ago when I built it. Wow. You know what's cool about logs, too, in building? It's really fast. When you put up a log wall, you do four things. You frame, you insulate, you do exterior siding and interior drywall mm -hmm. in All one move. Yeah. It's awesome. It's really fast. Mm -hmm. And it's really a comfortable, it really smells nice in my house, the pine logs. I mean, it's attractive. And it really, is a, it's a, it makes a good house. Wow. And, it, and it'll flex well in an earthquake. Have you ever had one here? We've had, we've had several here. Yeah. Yep. I was one day out bidding a job. It was hilarious. I'm in this guy's yard in this little pond right here. And I'm feeling myself like losing my sense of balance. I'm thinking like, what's going on? I'm looking at this water and going, Whoosh. I says, there's just an earthquake happened. And all of a sudden you hear all these phones ringing all around you in these houses. Everybody's calling about it. Did you feel that? It was, it was, I'm just standing outside and this water is doing this like, I'm like, wow, man, that was an earthquake. <laughs> Where was that at? Was in, that in Swim. It's, oh. How long ago was this? I would say um, maybe, maybe like 12 years ago. Yeah, got it. It was a while ago. But it was just, it was just I'm feeling like, how, what's happening? Equilibrium. I'm feeling like I'm, I'm moving. Like, right. what's up with this? You know, I see this pond like, whoosh, uh, like whoa, you. man, that's a, this is an earthquake. <laughs> Well, head on over here. I was just sharing with, with the people here. If you have a um, if you have a home with a, with a drain field, a septic system, use your drain field for your garden space, because you have sub irrigation forever, and you're recycling all your waste. You, you can see here in the grass is, is these three lines that are darker green. One over there, one right here, one right here. And you, and you see, this is my drain field, and all my wastewater is in that herb garden, and I never watered anything in there. Look how nice it is. You can see it's being all sub-irrigated, water coming up underneath. So it's again recycling all my wastewater. I want everybody to check out my fig trees. Look at how healthy they are. And then look at all the figs on them. And I live in a place you can't grow figs. I love it. It's so cool. No, the, how they get ripe is the very end starts to split, but the inter interior um, meat is like purple. Okay. So does the outside stay green? Yep. Oh. It's the only variety that gets ripe here. It's called Desert King. Okay. It's a very early variety. Because I know people, people like they go brown turkey and stuff, but they don't get ripe because it's not warm enough here. Exactly. But this one gets ripe, and it's awesome. And it's called which one? Desert King. Desert King. Okay. Now, if anybody wants a fig tree, you can go into my chicken pen there's a fig tree over there at the base there's all kinds of little shoots coming up you can break those off yep. and go plant them i'm telling you the truth from a stick stuck in the ground in three years i have fruit really? it's amazing how prolific they are wow. same it's the same tree wow. yeah then put it put it in water no just water just keep it wet don't let it dry out and then plant it and plant it deep because at each little lobe it'll create re roots and so you plant it deep the deeper you plant more roots you're going to get it's not just it's, 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 not, the, it's not just the tree or the stick that you go and put in it's What's also it the the the, 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 the uh, no no leaves you just want to put a stick in the ground right but then the ground that you you want to stick on is you probably want the the with the Wood chips well, ideally, but you can plant it in any soil and just put wood chips over it and you're good. doesn't matter the soil. Now, do you use herbs? I do. 
I want you to take a tiny piece of that thyme. I'm talking tiny, yeah, tiny. just so you can see how potent. Oh, right behind you. Okay, a tiny piece because you're going to be shocked at how potent that is. See how strong that is, though? Wood chips, amazing. It's, it's an herb. My wife is a, is a midwife. And she uses all these herbs that are practiced instead of drugs. I'm not sure all their names, but they all have um, nutrient. I heard we're supposed to try some thyme. Right here. Right here. A tiny piece because it's really strong. You'll be shocked at how strong it is. What is this flower? I'm not sure it's an herb. See how potent that is? Wow. So to take that away, this, this fennel here is going to blow you out. It's so sweet. Hmm. Take some of the, the foliage, the, the, like the fern stuff, yeah. and eat it. You're going to be blown. I mean, it is so sweet. It's, it's like dessert. Oh, wow. Is this basil in the greenhouse? Yeah. Is that in there to heat it up? Because basil, I'm too cold for, to grow basil outside, so the glass on the side knocks out the wind, keeps it warmer. Isn't that delicious? Mm. It's, like, it's like dessert. Mm -hmm. Sugar, man. Mm -hmm. in my greenhouse because uh -huh. the slugs would decimate them when they were outside. Uh -huh. but they're great in the gutters. Oh, wow. Wow, that is so sweet. Isn't that good? Like liquid. Yeah. Without all the extra sugar. Mm -hmm. mm. Now you, you notice there's no chicken, chicken smell. Water with this to get them started. Okay. Yeah. yeah, willow. Willow is. Starts. Willow is a. You know, willow trees. You can put a stick in the ground anywhere and they grow. Yes. Yeah. They're really all about rooting, and so making making a tea out of that is a major rooting element. Right. I mean, it really increases root developments gotcha. at big time. Wow. No, get out of there. Yeah. Put some rock over there, huh? I do. Yep. <laughs> No, you don't go in the chicken pen. Wow. Now you see what I did I've done over here? You see underneath my underneath my willow tree, you see that fig tree? Yes. You know why it's there? Why? Because when my figs get ripe, they're all gone. But by planting that there because it's in the shade, that comes later. So I extend my fig yes, harvest. Got it's it. so nice. cool. Yes. Absolutely. Ha! That's so funny. That's Very fascinating that you put a shear over your blueberries instead of netting. That's such a bright idea. Yeah, we, the, the, well, the, the birds. Oh, the, yeah, that's the birds like my, my blueberries. Netting doesn't get all now, is anybody, anybody growing um, uh, St. John's wort? Do you see the size of that I right there? I saw that. I saw that, yeah. It's awesome. Okay. I have never seen one that big. Isn't that cool? That is cool. I, I heard your wife uses the herbs. Yeah, she's, she, yeah she's, a, she's a midwife. She uses herbs instead of drugs uh -huh. because they're so much more effective and no side effects. Yeah, right. They really work. With, see, see this, this, is, this is black cohosh. That's a woman's herb right there. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. What does she use the St. John's for? Do you I'm, know? I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what, you know, I'm not, I'm not a bit of wife, I don't, I don't you know, right. but uh, she knows, she knows. She's been practicing like 43 years and she's pretty, pretty confident. Yeah. yeah. She's now delivering babies that she caught. She's delivering their babies. Oh, yeah. It was so, so here a few, I mean, a, a year ago, this woman's walking up my driveway with her daughter pregnant and I'm totally, deja vu was huge. I says, I remember when you were walking up my driveway pregnant with that baby, with your daughter. I was there that day. And here you are again, walking my driveway, and now your daughter's pregnant. Wow. Ah, I mean, it was like, I mean, incredible. You know, second generation. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Look at this. Like oh, wow. Yeah, see, those are the Olympic Mountains over there. 
way over, you see those high mountains, those, those, that's the Olympics. Oh, see, yeah. That's where my water's coming from, from those glaciers. Mm -hmm. It's really, really awesome. It really is beautiful. Yeah, this is a special place. We were really very, very, very thankful to live here. I have enough St. John's work. I mean, I had some a little bit on my property, but all growing around that I just go out and collect it. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once I mm -hmm. learned what it was. Yeah. So. So it really loves that. Basil, basil likes heat. Yeah. You know. But let, you know, you know why I have no roof in the greenhouse. Let me tell you about greenhouses. They totally destroy all the nutrient value in your food. Okay. Yeah, here it is. Yep. And you know why I took the roof off? Yes. Because by getting direct sunlight, I get nutrient value. They did a test. I grew up in Los Angeles in the 50s. And people were in the sun all the time down there because that's all you had. And people in their 40s and 50s, they look old because their skin is all wrinkled up. But you know in the 50s? When I was growing up, skin cancer did not exist. Right. It did not exist. Right. And you know why it didn't exist? Because back then, everybody ate tomatoes were grown outside in full sun. There is in tomatoes a, an enzyme that actually takes out the, the effect of photos, uh, the sun on, on your body. And you know, it's interesting when tom tom tomatoes get ripe. When do tomatoes get ripe? What time of year? Oh, no, in August, September, the hottest time in the summer. That's not accidental. That's intentional. And in cold climates where there's no sun, tomatoes don't grow. You don't need them. Because tomatoes are a nightshade. You shouldn't eat them all year long. But in our culture, we're eating nutrient, totally deficient tomatoes with no flavor in January. Which is stupid. Totally stupid. Here's what they found. A sun-ripened tomato had 300 phytochemicals. 300. The same variety going to greenhouse had 50. Wow. 250 were lost with light going through glass because it interrupts photosynthesis. It's huge. And today, all tomatoes, all tomatoes are grown in greenhouses. They're the most totally unhealthy, negative foods you could possibly eat. And they don't taste good. It's insane. People pay money for the stuff that doesn't taste good. So what do you do? How do you do? Do you do starts then? Or? Well, right behind you, you got tomatoes growing over there. And they'll get ripe and I'll eat them. Okay. But they're going to happen when the, when the sun's the hottest. Right. Got it. So and you when don't it, ever use a greenhouse for starts or anything? Nick does. For starts, it's okay. But you want to get them back outside. They get, you know, they get yeah. great for yeah. a start. But you want to get nutrient density, photosynthesis yeah. from the sun. Right. It's just, it's just right. so... Um, Significant. So do you do a lot of like food storage prep and... No, none. None. Food should be eaten when it's fresh. Did you know this, this is a scientific fact? That in 10 minutes, after fruits and vegetables are picked, they can lose up to 80% of the metabolic properties in 10 minutes. You should pick food and eat it. And so all year long, I have live food in my garden. Actually, the winter is the easiest time to maintain my garden because I can stay on top of what I'm growing. Because this time of year, I'm growing so much stuff, I can't even get around to sampling it because it's too much. But during the winter, I'm down to potatoes. I, I have those stored. I have root, root vegetables, you know, turnips, beets, carrots, all in the garden. I have all that kale. And I have total abundance of food the entire year. There's never any time I don't have fresh food in my garden. Wow. Which is how it's supposed to be. If you look in nature, the animals, and a few, a few, a few things store nuts, but for the most part, nothing's stored. They eat food fresh all year long, and they're fine. And they're mammals just like us. And we got lied to, telling you you get, you get protein from meat. That is a stupid lie. Here's the example. Look at the, look at the large animals producing that meat. Buffalo, horses, cows. Look how strong they are. You try to keep up with them. Where are they getting their protein? Plant, plant. plant life, grass. 24-7, a yeah. one-course meal their entire life. And they have major energy. They're not sick. And they're strong. Mm -hmm. Protein. All amino acids 
all amino acids comes from plant life. Yep. It's so incredible how simple it is. You know, and, and the very first chapter in Genesis, God gave us our diet. Vegetables, fruits, and seeds is what I've given you for food. That was it. It wasn't meat. Meat's not included. You know what's interesting about God? Is that he knew we'd be lied to in school, so he had the book of Daniel written. This is significant. The book of Daniel validates the first chapter of Genesis. Here Daniel and his three friends were taken captive as teenagers into a foreign land. They were prisoners of war. But these guys were paying attention to the owner's manual. and They were connected to God. And the people around them noticed they were sharp. So they brought them into the king's court. He says, we're going to use these guys. So Daniel's eating this dead, corrupted food. And he's thinking like, man, I don't feel good. This is no good for me. So he goes to the guy and says, listen, you need to give us vegetables and water because this stuff's no good. And the guy says, man, vegetables and water, you won't, they'll take my head off. He says, Daniel, give us, give us a 10-day test. 10 days. We won't die. And you can check us out. You ever read the results of the test? It says they were more buff. They were fatter. They were sharper. They were brighter. And they got it. And God wrote that there to connect us to Genesis 1 because he knew we'd be lied to in school. And he's saying, this is validation to what I said. The food you need is fruits, vegetables, and seeds. Period. It's all there. It's a big deal. Yeah. So, D, uh, are you... I don't eat meat. Okay. No. Yeah. Now, on, now, on Passover, I eat lamb. And if I go to someone's house and they, they offer it, I give thanks and I eat it. But I normally don't eat meat. Yeah. yeah. Eggs. Eggs. Eggs, I eat eggs because these chickens are eating well. Right. And my eggs are probably the most nutritious food on the planet. Right. They are really good. My eggs, the yolks are dark orange and they stand up. <laughs> and you know what's interesting? We had one year of drought here. We're talking like really hot and, and the produce grew like crazy and I couldn't get it all. So I'm feeding tr just wheelbarrow loads of my chickens. My wife is whining. She says, Paul, I can't crack these eggshells. What are you giving them? And I says, I'm giving them produce. It's full of calcium. It's just I'm like she couldn't crack the eggshells because they were so hard from all the greens they're eating. I so enjoy these these to show you about bones. And, and again, show, again to get realities of how nature works. Mm -hmm. You don't get you don't get calcium from you know um, from milk from, from milk. Does your family eat dairy? No, I like butter. I like butter, and, and but I don't I don't eat cheese or milk or anything like that. I love butter. I totally love butter. Yeah, I love butter. Yep, absolutely. No, I have a lot of potato with a lot of butter. <laughs> <laughs> I like potatoes. Okay. But yeah, butter butter is good. Yeah, it is. And that stuff that's coming from, um, uh, where is that? I Ireland, Costco yeah. have is really good Kerry butter. Gold, Kerry, yeah, yeah, that, that is I good butter. That's, I get I love that's it. good butter. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? The butter, I, I don't, butter is having no ill effects on me. Because I eat well, All and right. so I it just I compensate, you know. Yep. I can handle a little bit better because I got everything else good. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what, how much of your diet would you say is like from your land versus what you buy at the grocery store? Almost all. Wow. I don't go to the store. That's awesome. Well, you know the, the problem with the store I have, the stuff costs a fortune. I'm shocked at what people pay for for, and it doesn't taste good. It's no good, and I'm gonna buy this. I'm serious. I mean, I'm, I'm eating this stuff, and I go to the store. It's gross. Yeah. It doesn't taste good. Yeah. And I'm gonna pay for that. It makes no sense. It's, true. <sighs> it's it's totally gross, yeah. terrible stuff. Like, and, and I can't believe people are paying this for a potato, and it's not even good, a good potato. Right. Where I got just tons of potatoes, you know. Just, right. I feed my potatoes to my chickens. I have too much, you know. <laughs> You know you have abundance when you give it to your chickens. Yeah. Yeah, my chickens eat better than most people, really. Yeah. I'm serious. They get, they get good food. Wow. Look at that rooster. <laughs> so What's this bush doing? 
It's a marshmallow. Yeah, it does. Marshmallow. Is it the same as wild hollyhock? I think that's what... Is it the same? I don't think it's... I don't know. Marshmallow and wild hollyhock? That's what I've looked. Okay. I didn't know that. In one of my books. How did you that's, that's rosemary. Over here with the white flowers. The, the sheer on the blueberries. How did Carol did that. Carol did that. Maybe it's a different variety or something? What a bright well, woman. woman. <laughs> the thing is it catches wind and I'm kind of scared it's going to break branches if you get a little wind. Oh. It's one thing if the whole bush is covered in it. Oh. That's a sail. It's, oh, it's a sail. Yeah. yeah. But um, what if you it's put pretty posts, well secured yeah. with the... Closed. But if you put posts and made like a canopy and you could. Yeah. Touch it. I mean, and the best the way to keep birds off of blueberries is just we have to head out by the one of those things. Oh, thank you. All right, cool. Glad you could come. Yeah. We'll see you again. Yeah. Okay. Tell me that a month ago. You didn't ask a month ago. PDC over the. Yeah, eat, eat, the, eat that. They're really, they're really good. Oh, one of my favorites. Thanks. Yeah, just see how good they are. The flavor's great. It's uh, 5 o'clock. Time flies when having fun. Time flies when you're having fun and learn it. And tasty. And tasty. Well, that's all I have for this video. Bang around that bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos come out. Call us on the hotline if you have comments or questions and want to be featured in an upcoming video. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. Check us out on the website, and we'll see you guys on the next one.